Hey, what is going on, guys? Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. About to hit first of the week. Get to the grind, as usual. Good to see you guys at the AV Experience Podcast. Ryan, what is happening, man? I'm tired. <laughs> you're tired. You're We're tired. all tired. I'm always yeah. tired. You are. You are. So I'm tired. We have my grandson for five days, or six days, actually. He's going home literally in a few minutes. Um, my son and daughter-in-law are on the way back from California. They took a trip out there to to like a gaming convention because he does TikTok videos on gaming reviews. And so they had a a gaming um, the awards basically. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> really cool event out there. And he connected with some of his content creator buddies from literally all over the world. And they rented this big mansion and just had a cool time, man. So that's always way more fun. I'm gonna hit this before he. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Uh, Peter, yes, I am an Ascendo dealer, and let, unless you met Ascend, which is also a speaker company. If that's the case, no, I am not, but I'm an Ascendo dealer. Yeah, I don't know who Ascend would be. <clears throat> well, they have a, it's, there's an Ascend speaker company. I am not mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, Ascendo, though. Yeah, I gotcha. Super cool. Let me say hi to some folks in the chat. We got Gerald. Good to see you, Jeff. Mikey, what's happening, man? Chris? SRW 1000, Sonny's in the house, Finster, Nicholas, John Raiders, John Lambers. Super cool, man. Lots of folks. Hey, Don, what's going on, man? Tarhoya, Charlie, a lot of folks in the chat, man. Schmock, good to see you, Peter. <clears throat> All right, man. So we are minus one tonight. So Jonathan has a, I think he's, he said his daughter's in a play. Like at church. Some maybe? Christmas, like. Yeah, play or something. I think it was, which yep. I'd be all about that. That always takes precedence, man. I told him, take care of business, man. Family first, family. absolutely. Family always comes first. I almost had my grandson in my lap tonight. <laughs> I, I thought almost had it. my daughter. Yeah, it's yeah. been one of those days. Yeah. So cool deal, man. So yeah, so we're going to be answering questions tonight. So if you've got those, drop those in the chat. We'll star those and we'll just go in the order that they come. Super chats, of course, get priority. And we just saw one drop. So, Chris, we'll hit yours first. But uh, anything new and exciting? Well, first thing, we got to talk about the abyss, right? So, uh -huh. did you watch it? No. <laughs> oh, dude, I've been no. Amazed. I'll have she, an excuse. Roman could have watched it. Whatever. It's not that it's bad, bad of a movie. It's, it's not, not bad, bad actually bad. at all. Wonderful. Dude, if and, it ain't Bluey or a Miss Bluey. Rachel or Blippy, yeah, yeah he ain't, he ain't about any of that. My daughter loves Bluey, so I, <laughs> I don't mind Bluey actually. I think it teaches a lot of good family values. The yeah. things that they do, I think, are really positive. It's funny that my daughter will start calling things like how they talk, like holiday okay. and the toilet instead of the bathroom. Okay. And it's just how she picks up on that stuff. So that's I love it. that's always interesting. Yeah. Uh, but mm. Abyss, right? So 4K remastering of Abyss just hit the theaters. Mm -hmm. I did not see that, but I rewatched it. Mm -hmm. I've never been a huge fan of the movie. I mean, yeah. it's it's okay. I think it was kind of ahead of its time for the things that they did. I mean, right. the the alien if you will that's in it is very much like the the terminator that's in terminator 2 the like gelatin like thing so mm -hmm. it's it, it's really cool the animation and the cgi things that they did so i give it credit for that but i just doesn't really do a whole lot for me um no. i think for the 1989 still a good movie okay for the time period uh, so the one, which version did you catch? Uh, what version was this? I mean, it was almost three hours long, so I think it was <laughs> the extended version, probably. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know what version it was. It was whatever I had on my Plex server, and I mean, it was okay. It what? It's not something that I will. I would think to myself, man, I want to watch the Abyss. Mm -hmm. It's not what I would do. The sub scene, and guys, we're going to talk about. You know, we're going to blow the ending. Um, yeah, so if you're... I'm, I won't say I'll blow the ending, but I'm going to talk about some stuff that happens in the movie. Spoiler. I'll give you a thumbs up if you don't want the spoiler. Yes, we're going to talk about it now. So if you're going to leave, just leave it. now. 
give people a minute to leave. Nah, just go for it. So <laughs> I thought when they were doing the sub scene, when they're like battling each other in the subs, it just reminded me of the PS1 game called Critical Depth. Okay. Where that go out and it's like twisted metal but submarines and they go out and beat the crap out of each other to see who's gonna win that's mm -hmm. what it reminded me of it was probably robert it was probably the director's cut and i don't think it really would have mattered what version it was in this <clears throat> personal opinion i don't think it's a bad movie it's just uh, not, not the greatest, yeah in that time period one of the the only movies that i'll actively seek out is alien mm. i mean it wasn't abysmal no I'll, I'll agree with that. It was not abysmal. Right. It was not on the level of Tremors. It was much better than Tremors. It was a good movie, but... Okay, why are y'all picking not-so-great movies, then? Uh, we when... picked this one because it just came out in the 4K remaster. Oh, so okay. it was something to talk about. But, chat, what do you think about? What did you think about the movie? I mean... Ambulance, yeah. People are saying that the 4K remaster was amazing. Was it amazing? I heard that the Titanic remaster was amazing, supposedly. Trump said it wasn't, and then you got Tarhoya says it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was abysmal. Ha 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 ha. Oh, yeah. That was good. Uh, somebody asked a question in there. I just want to make actually, sure. I don't, I don't know how start. you spell it. I don't know either. Maybe that's actually how you sp spell it. Yeah, I don't think abysmal is probably not correct, but. Apocalypto is a good movie, but I won't actively go seek it out. There's very mm -hmm. few like 80s movies that I'll seek out. It's you can tell when you're watching an 80s movie just by the color palette. Sure. I mean, obviously the music choices, the hairstyles, all that stuff. P. Well, yeah. But it's just one, one big pixel. <laughs> just changes colors. That's <laughs> right. Oh, Leon that? says 4K Abyss had some great underwater shots. Nope. Uh, the old ILM 8990 shots looked bad. Yeah, that's something that people need to realize that if there's crap, mm -hmm. enhanced crap is still crap a lot yeah. of times. Yeah, so you can't, you can't fix a hot mess. And that's not to say that they did a bad job. They were working within the constraints yeah. of what they had, but it's what I tell people with that bring things up with mad VR with our AK upscaling is, yeah. well, is this going to make this look better? I'm like, well, if you feed it crap, right? Like crap in crap out. That's what's yeah. going to happen. It's not it's a magic box. Sting, no matter how you cut yeah. it. Yeah. You may get enhanced crap, but it's still going to be That'd be some potpourri no, on the top of the you know, crap. A 4k still... shot <laughs> of dog doo doo is still dog doo doo. That's what it is. It's just got some more pixels with it. You'll see the corn and everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh that was terrible that was good that was that good was all right so other thing uh my theater we made a little bit of progress but we'll let's hey, see you what ordered some new, you ordered some speakers right so i ordered a bunch of speakers all of the beryllium stuff's been ordered so the black swans all the 15 inch uh the 15 mm -hmm. pro beryllium's they've all been ordered so that's your LCR, your side surrounds, and the surrounds and the tops. Yeah, and the top. Okay. The only thing that's left is the subs. Okay. Um, I've already bought the the fifty. The most so expensive it's, things. No, it's the fifty's been bought and stuff. It's just the, I say just. It's just the thirty twos and the twenty ones. Okay. Um, the JVC got sold, so mm -hmm. now we're really up in the air on what direction we're going to go. Yeah. I bought. So what else did we get? I took an order of 20 bats of R38. So it's 12 inch deep insulation that's going to go in the okay. ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, what else got delivered? 100 sheets of three quarter inch OSB. And I was nice. adding that all up. That's two tons of plywood. Two tons yeah. of plywood is sitting in my garage. I'm glad so you got that. that You'd be really yeah, tired. I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'll help them. I'll help them. I helped yeah. them a lot today. Because uh, yeah. it's hard for me just to watch people work. Like that's it's weird. Well, that theater too, man. That's you weird. Be part of it. So we got that. Got a bunch of green glue. Got the rizzit mm -hmm. clips. Mm -hmm. Um, what else came? What else did we do? I ordered. So the thing that I'm trying to ponder right now is electrical. Um, electrical is. I'm trying to make sure that I do this right, and it's probably going to be overkill, right? Mm -hmm. So, but whatever I do, because the 
surround channels and the LCRs can handle obscene amounts of power. And there's going to be times not for normal listening, but for demo purposes that I'm just going to unload everything. Let her, like let it's just going to go. We're going to see how far we can push thing. I mean, that's going to happen. Yeah. And because of that, I've got to have amps that deliver enough yeah. power. So I was talking to Dylan from Buckeye mm -hmm. yesterday. Maybe it was today. Yeah. Today. It was to no, it was yesterday. I was talking to him and we were talking about the Hypex and we were talking about the Purify and talking about some other amps like the Trinov and the Storm and the co the Synad and Distortion and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that probably the best course of action is for me to use Hypex, so the NC502s. We're going to do rack mounted chassis. Okay. Um and to bridge them. So we're going to do each chassis is going to contain three modules which each module is a stereo pair. So then you bridge each module. So instead of it outputting like 300 and something watts per channel, right. it's 1,200 watts per channel <laughs> at 8 ohms. Oh, man. So, and these are super efficient speakers too, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. So the, the 15 Pro Beryllium are 99 dB efficient. Yikes. But with one when watt. We're, with one watt. But with when we were doing the, ca the calculation and stuff, to, for me to hit reference without any EQ and stuff, it's like 64 watts of power. Yeah. Something sure. like that. Yeah. Then it goes out of control really, really fast. So if mm -hmm. I need to EQ and boost to any certain level, mm -hmm. and let's say I need to boost to, I don't know, 60 B or something. Well, now I'm at 256 watts. Mm -hmm. So 1200 watts may sound like a ton of headroom. Right. But it's really only like 6 dB from that point, mm -hmm. right? 256 to 512 to 1024, right? right. So it's only 6 dB more is, yeah. is 1,200 watts. Yeah, yeah. And the so other... amplification. Yeah, so the other reason that we wanted... To, I went that direction is because I was trying to find something where all the speakers could run off the same amp, mm -hmm. right? The same exact amp, so the gains were all exactly the same. And I realized that the Trenov and the Storm, they'll all... For the most part take care of it right but even mixing like the purify their gain is different than what the hypex is doing and it's i just wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. might as well take care of as much of it as possible yeah. and i think the the hypex if we use their low gain he didn't get i don't remember if he gave me anything with bridged but their noise floor is, is like right 118 db or something like that which mm -hmm. is more than enough in all honesty. So tried to figure that out. Talk to Dylan about that. And that's the direction I think I'm going right now because I think it makes the most sense for the subs. It's all going to be Ascendo amps. Yeah. Um, okay. The 21s and 32s are going to be powered by 10,000 watt amplifiers. So the 21s are going to have that split out. I think they're each going to get 5,000 watts a piece. Um, the 32s are going to get 10,000 watts a piece, and then the 50 gets 20,000. Mm -hmm. Not that it's ever going to get that. I don't think it'll ever use that. I don't even know how many amps I would actually have to have for a circuit. I think it's like 100 amps or something insane to actually mm -hmm. utilize that. If it was pulling that from the wall, I don't know how the amp does that and how right. it converts everything. Um, so that led me to what I've been pondering lately and trying to build out a shopping cart for was how do I break out my electrical? Mm -hmm. And for right now, because each one of those Hypex chassis needs, if I want to push them to the full limit, needs two 15 amp breakers. Wow. Each? Each. Well, like, because you have one C13 yeah. coming out of, well, you have two C13s coming out of each chassis. Right. And to run fully, yeah. you'd want each one to be on its own 15 amp circuit. Mm -hmm. So wow. that means for the rack, I'm going to need something like 20 circuits. That's insane. <laughs> I've been telling people, somebody asked today, like, what is the craziest system that, like, <laughs> the most awesome system that you've experienced? And I'm, I'm like, dude, I've experienced over about 75 at this point mm. in five years, six years. And I said, I haven't experienced this one yet, but I really have a feeling this uh, one's going to be right up there at the very top, man. It's uh, so 20, 20 circuits. Wow. I'm lucky that 
it's not a very far run. So I've been mm-hmm. looking at the Romex. I've been looking at the gang boxes and everything. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's going to cost for the electrical, not including the breakers, about five hundred bucks. Okay, but that's not bad. a no. lot. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, doing it myself. If couple, yeah, if it's several thousand, no, I guess, no, I guess way on out there. If you hire an electrician. Mm. It can get that's but I'm gonna run out of break. I at that point I'm out of circuits. Like I I'd have to run another box. I would have to run another panel. This is one for your house and one for the theater. Well, that's what this one. What was in there was supposed to be, but it's I've eclipsed that. It's well past that. So I'm happy for you, man. Thanks. It's and 500 a month in electrical. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So we're trying to figure that out. Mm. I've been trying to build that and figure out how I want to do that because I want to do it right. So I sent a message to Ascend him like, listen, how many amps do I really need for this stuff? Yeah. Because on their website, it says 14.3 or something like that. So I don't mm. know what the amplifier is doing, but that's what it says for mm. wall power. Sure. I'm like, ah, it's... let me just ask the source. <laughs> oh, dude, this are funny. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happens. The subs hit and the whole neighborhoods just go brown out. <laughs> and Ryan says he hates AFC eye breakers. I, I know the mm-hmm. feeling. They're a pain in the butt. They mm-hmm. are a pain. We were having problems with one upstairs where we turn on the microwave and it would trip the breaker. Or no, it was my wife's coffee maker and it would trip the breaker. I haven't had a problem with them at all for home theater, though. It's been okay. Haven't had an issue in in that regard with them. Trying to think yeah. if there's anything else we were trying to contemplate and trying to figure out. Um, I don't think so. I it's think that's cool, it. Man. So he'll be back out here tomorrow afternoon and we'll continue. I think tomorrow we'll do, uh, we got to move a wall. Mm-hmm. Um. And then once the wall gets moved, then we will do start on the wrist clips and because mm-hmm. we got to get everything framed in, sure. except that wall so that I can get dimensions to off the chinas. Mm-hmm. They can tell me where the door is going to go before we can, you know, finish that wall. So I've got a question for you. Somebody mentioned mm-hmm. this last week. How are you getting the 50 down there? It fits down the, the stairs. Yes. It does. It fits by two inches. Dude, you and I took an RTJ sub, well, was it the towers or sub one of those two? And that was heavy. That was a pain in the butt. Oh, I'm gonna hire safe movers to do it. <laughs> Man, yeah. that's there's gonna... no other way to do it. Oh, it's wow. it's too big. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna take your banister down? I'm guessing to come down the stairs and then yeah, I don't think that would help. Really? So I if I do it, off. it's like six feet long okay and There's the other way it's like f- just over five feet it's like five and a half feet so i think mm-hmm. it'll make it because you um, gotta make two 90s you gotta make a 90 at the top to come down getting down at the bottom is not a problem because you can kind of let it fall over at an angle that's not really a huge issue it's gonna fall it's, over and bust out your wall i know <laughs> then your house is gonna collapse because uh well we oh, could probably okay. use the 50 as foundational support yeah um, yeah for sure Ryan asks, any worries about the 117 dB sensitivity? Hmm. Yes oh, and no. That's on the horns. Hmm. So it's possible. I, Dylan's going to send me some stuff to test once we get the speakers. And it. I may end up putting them on purifies. Because since the horns are so efficient, they may go on different amps than everything else. I don't know. We got to figure that out. I'd like to not do that. Mm-hmm. As we sit right now, the recommendation from Ascendo is like, hey, use the Trinov um, altitudes, Amplitude 16 because they've used supposedly it on those and they haven't had a noise floor issue. Yeah. But you can't go wrong with Purify for distortion and noise floor. So if I do anything, I think as of right now, I'm leaning towards mm-hmm. Purifies. Dylan right now is working on a new coming soon Purify module that's not out yet. Mm -hmm. So he wants to test that with them. Um, I can test it with the 7040s that I have. I need six channels of whatever it is. I mean, I could run the the um, the horns on something different than the Wolfers, but 
it, we haven't quite figured that out, Ryan. It's mm -hmm. that's part of the whole amp equation is trying to figure out, well, what do we do with these insanely efficient speakers? Yeah. So that's right now I'm leaning towards Hypex and the NC502s, I think. Um I didn't realize this that the 15 Pro Beryllium also has its compression driver is a 1.5 inch piece of beryllium. Okay. I mean that's yeah. That's, that's insane. Easy. Yeah. And out of a compression driver. Yeah. So I'm excited about those. Yeah. Um So when do they when does when do speakers start arriving? Well, we're going to hold them down. Everything's going to come into Houston. Okay. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. I may want to get the black swans up here mm -hmm. and I may just have that, the beryllium, all the beryllium stuff. Cause that's what's coming right now. Just yeah. have it all shipped up here. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it would be good to test and to test fit and do all that stuff. Sure. So that's possible. Maybe I'll put the black swans in my living room to really make my wife angry. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, but after Christmas sometime, they're in yeah. stock in Germany. So okay. they're, they're made. It's just yeah. they got to get over here. Nice. Now, how long that takes? Sure. I don't know. I don't know how long the beryllium's or the 15s are going to take either. But that's where we're sitting right now. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm excited for, I'm excited for me. I'm excited for the folks uh, that are coming to M-Wave and they get, there's a handful that are going to come over to your home. So it's going to be fun, dude. Well, you're going to be one of the first people to experience it if you're going to come out when we're putting the room together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, we'll see. Yeah. We'll have some fun. I'm, I'm just looking forward to getting my basement cleaned up because it's, and to get yeah. my car spaces back because we've only got one parking spot and both our cars are electric. So trying to jockey, like who needs to charge? Who doesn't need to charge? Who needs to charge? Cause I got two tons of OSB sitting in my yeah garage. You're using black swans for no Bruce hell to the no. <laughs> so supposedly there is a theater that's talking really? about doing. Yes. Wow. That, all that's black insane. Swans. All black swans for the bed layer. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that for the tops and just looking up? There's a black swan. <laughs> He's all these horns from the like, ceiling. Is there an up there or what, man? No, nope, that's fine. But there is a theater somewhere that they're contemplating doing, which would be amazing. Yeah. I don't know. How that is it out of country, maybe? or Supposedly it's in the oh. U.S. Okay. Nice. That's all I know. So all right. we'll keep giving you guys updates. Asks, have your black swans got a single 15-inch mid or did you go with the dual? singles there is no reason to go with the duel um that was just kind of i talked to jeffrey about this and jeffrey made those just kind of a we can offer them as mm -hmm. a possibility and the only reason it exists is because technically the woofer is not able to keep up with the horn like mm -hmm. it is the speaker with one woofer is yeah. limited in output right. because of the woofer so the whole reason for the added woofers is if the space is too large and they have to add to increase the decibel output or the SPL output mm -hmm. by doubling. So you've got a two woofer and then you've got a four woofer version. The four can keep up with the horn. Isn't that yeah. unreal? It takes four That's 15s wild. to keep up with that stupid yeah. horn. I think it's massive, dude. And like I said, we heard it and they're beautiful. They were, yeah. And again, I, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, what to expect, you know? But super sweet man it is i've yet to find somebody that's heard them that has been like yeah that's not a good yeah. speaker or like they're just, okay and no they're like yeah. that was life-changing big smile on, on your face no, everybody's face when you've got a competitor for another speaker brand and he's like oh yeah dude you know it's it's pretty it good. says something <laughs> yeah it says something yeah he was having a good time Sweet man. That's so Nicholas lot. asks, would JTR compression driver waveguide front stage pan well with soft dome tweeter surrounds? Like or pan pair well. well. Pair well. I think the hardest part, like we've talked about this quite a bit with soft dome tweeters. Um, sometimes it's difficult to get to reference volume, um, especially depending on how far back they are. So if you got a big room, those yeah, I mean, a soft dome tweeter next to a compression driver. Any compression driver is going to be hard to keep up. It's going to sound different. Mm -hmm. Not going to sound the same. Yeah. Uh, I would I highly. Don't, I, don't, I don't know, like even level wise, like it could 
kind of like the black swan with the you know the horn with the 15 mm -hmm. it may not be able to physically keep up with it no absolutely not and out in output absolutely not i mean look at what uh we'll just stay with the sendo since we're talking about black swans <laughs> and I, jtr doesn't have a soft dome comparator like they right. don't have one that i can use as a comparison ascendo yeah. does that's why i'm using them mm -hmm. so ascendo the five and the six are both soft dome tweeters mm -hmm. the five and the six if you look at the spinorama data it at lower frequencies just falls off mm -hmm. it hits like 120 125 db at the higher stuff that's less demanding right. but yeah. when you start really stressing that tweeter out mm -hmm. it does not perform nearly mm -hmm. as well as when you move up to the 10 which is a compression driver and right. it's able to keep a nice flat linear frequency response down to where you need it so if you don't plan on listening loud you could potentially do it mm. theoretically would i suggest it no because this is what happens in my experience it's what happened to me and why i'm building this theater of the way i'm building it mm -hmm. once you get used to listening to a speaker that can do insane volumes mm -hmm. In almost every application that I've seen them deployed, you start listening louder because it's less fatiguing, right? Mm -hmm. We equate fatiguing our ear fatigue, not necessarily with loudness, but because of the distortion. But we think it's the loudness, mm -hmm. but it's the loudness causing the distortion. Now, once you hit a certain point, your ears are going to start to distort, right? Because they can't keep up with the SPL. Yeah. But in almost every experience that I've been a part of, when somebody gets speakers that can do insane volumes without distorting, mm -hmm. they're going to start listening louder because it doesn't become fatiguing. Mm -hmm. And they're able to get that more immersive experience from the louder output from their speaker. And that, that's just been what I have experienced with other people. Um, and it goes all the way up to like 120, 130 dB with your, your speakers. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, not that you would listen that loud, but if you can listen that loud without distorting and your ears are like, yeah, I understand everything that's going on and it doesn't hurt. You're going to be ringing for a while after that. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes much more approachable. And kind of dangerous at the same time, because yeah, you, you don't necessarily you don't realize, realize how loud yeah. you're listening. I agree. Um, that's been. What I have come to realize, Nicholas, for you, I would say. Timbre match as much as possible i would not mix mm -hmm. soft domes with the jtr compressions unless you absolutely have to i mean if there's a financial reason yeah i get it mm -hmm. but if you're just trying to say save some money or what have you i i don't know that i would do that look at the jtr 110 it's there for a reason mm -hmm. use it as surrounds the slant 10 yeah. 10 it's what michael uses in his room no yeah. Dude, pretty awesome. So I'm going to throw this one up real quick. It's kind of out of order. I'm, I'm coming to you, Super Chats. We just finished with Ryan, but I want to throw this one up there before I forget. Where is it at? Oh, here we go. Ross says uh, he can, I can come help him bring the Eclipse up the stairs. So Ross and, and uh, Nigel are hooking up the Eclipse. They're getting their showroom ready over here in Florida. It's got to so go down not, the stairs. Yeah, they're not they're not too far from me. So, oh, you're telling somebody else. Yeah. So Ross, Ross, you're Ross somebody is saying, else. like, hey, you need oh, to come. You. Oh, you. Oh. Because the Eclipse is big old boy, too. That's a massive. It's multiple effect. pieces. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you in the chat, Ross. Good folks over there. Absolute ultimate AV. All right. Cool, man. Let's go ahead and anything else, Ryan? I don't want to cut you off. Uh, I don't think so. I'm just going to, if you guys haven't followed the thread already, it's called The Void mm -hmm. on AVS Forums. Mm -hmm. I've got a I link in this description. So I try and update it as much as possible. Even like today, it was just about deliveries and just kind of mm -hmm. ripping stuff apart. But yeah. I try and update it whenever we do something with pictures, not only just typing out kind of what we did. So if you want to follow along and have any questions or any suggestions, that'd be the place to do it. Like today, somebody made a suggestion about HVAC mm -hmm. for the projector because I'm looking at big boy projectors like yeah. Barco, Christie, trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And he made the suggestion of running like an eight inch um, flex conduit, like a HVAC mm -hmm. conduit um, to the 
the projector and then I would just use like an AC infinity as okay. an exhaust and pipe it through the eight inch to get it out of the room. Mm, right. See. Because the room's going to be so well sealed that, and that's really going to be the only heat source that getting it out of the room means mm. that any cooling coming in just has to cool the people generating heat and not really yeah. anything else. Sure. So that was a great suggestion. Some, I hadn't really thought about it doing that way, which is great. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to get some flexible conduit or, um, whatever hvac tubing and run it i think it'll take like 30 feet and dump it out underneath my stairs and yeah that'll get it out of the room and i would work. recommend that to anybody that's starting to build your theater room start a build thread in the avs form because oh, you're yeah. going to get a lot of other people that give you just some some third party kind of just additional perspective i guess is the best way to to describe it things that you might not think about mm -hmm. maybe just trying to think outside the box and you're like, oh man, I, I could have really spent a lot more money or this would have been a big headache if I would have did it my way. But this guy's been there, done that. Maybe they built one similar to yours and just has some, some good ideas for you. And so I did that with mine. I know it was super helpful. And Ryan's been doing this for quite a while. And, you know, he's still getting input and learning and oh. getting ideas from other people. And that's what the community is about. It's helping There's each other always out. stuff you're going to forget. Yeah. And it's best to have other guys thinking that stuff through for you than you trying to have to run everything through your own head. Yeah. Cause you're looking at all the, like all this minute pieces and they may just be focused on one thing and they're like, Hey, I got an idea here mm -hmm. or this may be a pitfall here. So, so somebody else asked a question about the theater. Tito asked uh, curious what you're going to do for projector and screen mm -hmm. right now. The two options the three options I'm considering for projector are a Barco Nord, a Christie M4K15. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the, there's the blend. <laughs> hey, there's M4K your boat. <laughs> or the Christie Griffin. I think. Really? Three, yeah. Oh my gosh. Gross. So that I have a converse, I have a conversation with Christie on Tuesday. Wow. So we will see. Okay. I want them to come to M Wave. Yeah. Um, Holy we cow. Because I, you know, talking, because I've been talking to Alex from Atlanta Home Theater and Cameron from Insane AV. And it's, it's just like a reincarnation of the Kansas City group. Mm -hmm. Now you're dealing with dealers that are trying to talk you into <laughs> stuff. Everybody, it's really easy to spend other people's money. It is. So it's man. like, oh man, you should, uh, you should do this. And oh, wow. Alex is like, oh, because he's big, maybe he has a griffin and he's yeah like you can't go back yeah. but my my quandary here is that the m4k 15 in the m series because it's a two it's a 2k it's an e-shifter it's not mm -hmm. true 4k but it has better contrast right. than the griffin but the griffin has better color and it's much sharper because it's true 4k mm -hmm. so that's that for the screen i don't know I don't know. I'm I'm debating on doing spandex. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> Just do some spandex, man. I'm awesome. debating on doing some type of like gray or black material. Because if I go with something like the Griffin, mm -hmm. I want to offset the lack of contrast. And you could potentially do that by using the material. Mm -hmm. But if I do that, I'm also eliminating potentially a weave. I'm going to a perf. Right. So it would be like a gray mat or something like that i don't i don't know <laughs> ross says the balloons have spoken <laughs> yeah well that's that was funny just the perfect time he's like yeah i might be considering this boop boop celebrate boop, boop. so we'll see we'll know more by next stream yeah i think so we'll see this evolve right here on the podcast so each week you can kind of check in we'll get an update from ryan and on his i love seeing everybody's home theater journey because it all looks different you know, and you may look at Ryan's and go, holy cow, I could never get to that point. I guarantee if you ask Ryan, even five years ago, would you have ever seen yourself building out this type of home theater? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, so the thing is, is that where we're at now isn't necessarily where we're going to be five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And of course, I've always encouraged you guys, just enjoy the journey, man. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Build it the way that you want it. Um, 
and just enjoy it. So it's going to be awesome. Definitely going to be a, I would say a legendary home theater. Mm, we'll see. I'll be honest, man. It definitely has the potential. So I, it's, I'm surprised at how many people know about it mm -hmm. is the interesting part. Like I was yeah. getting hit by people saying, oh, you're the guy building the the void on when I was at the tech summit in Austin. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. They posted about it on um, LinkedIn and I shared it on my LinkedIn. And so <laughs> I see it everywhere, man. So Whatever. It's pretty cool. Whatever. We'll see. Hopefully it all comes together and doesn't suck. That's the goal. Nah, Don't suck. Suck. No, it could. Not. All right. Let's go ahead and get to your questions and we'll hit the super chats first. Chris, appreciate the $10 super chat. He says Abyss 4K, 97% superb. All right. So kind of high marks there with 3% having a couple obvious rough spots in picture quality, but the sound mix was mainly on point, very ambient, but will be a must when it comes out on Kscape 4K disc. So big fan of Abyss 4K. Super cool, man. And it's funny because like we all have different, you know, ideas of what we like in a movie, you know, things that really stand out to us, things that really get us excited. And uh, but that's super cool. Appreciate that, Chris. Another one here, Don, $5 super chat. Appreciate it, brother. He says Ryan should just ship his room to M-Wave so the attendees can experience it. So where that's coming from is I think two weeks ago when Ryan was kind of just sharing his vision for his room, Part of that is this room is being designed by Officina Acoustica. I think I pronounced that right. It's over in, where's that at, Ryan? Italy. Italy. So they're over in Italy. They design it. They ship it in kind of like pieces, and then they build it out um, in his home. And the cool thing is, I say this very loosely, it's modular, um, meaning that it, it could is be torn down. And if he moved, um, then he could bring that with him. He wouldn't have to start completely over. And so Don's like, pack that joker up, man. Bring it to M-Wave. So I don't no. think he wants to build that that room twice. But no. uh, good suggestion. There is a lot of infrastructure that goes on behind it. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Nicholas, yeah, I, appreciate I, guys, I turned off my camera because I'm eating. And probably yeah, go ahead. Watch me no, eat. you're good. So Nicholas, appreciate the $8 super chat. He says, hey, so it turns out if Ryan wasn't hit by a truck, he would ironically not be here with us right now. Probably not. What is that? What is that in reference to? My is accident there... that I got, I got hit by a delivery truck. Oh, uh, got motorcycle. You. No, I wouldn't because I yeah. wouldn't have started this AV business. I would have That's never true. met Michael. Yeah. So, you know, things, things happen. You got to yeah. roll with it. Yeah. And that's, that's just life, man. I mean, we can't control the things that happen to us. What we can control is our attitude our perspective yep. um, and sometimes you just got to embrace the suck, roll with it and move forward. And I think you've done an incredible job. It's been great to see your journey over the past. I was about to say, sadly, two years, that's not the word. Surprisingly only two years kind of thing, you know? So look where you've come in this sad two years, Ryan. <laughs> hey, that's, that's no better than your comment to Jonathan. Where Dude, I, I was replaying that in my head today. Like, oh what my God. I, why dude you ran him under the bus so oh. bad that was funny i know you didn't mean to but it, you're like your system doesn't sound bad for what it is everybody's like whoa that was funny god have some fun and all right here we go nicholas appreciate the 15 dollars super chat he said we need to touch on reference level it's very confusing. Michael sets zero on his AVR to 75 dB. And actually, I think that's 85. I always get confused um, and listens at negative 10, which is true. Usually I'm at about negative 10, sometimes negative 15, but usually I'm at negative 10 because to me, reference is too loud for my preference for watching a movie most of the time. He said that would be equal to me listening at negative 40. Okay, so here's where he's going with this. Negative 40 on my AVM 90 as arc tune 75 dB at negative 30 help. So he sent me an email or maybe it was a um, question on my channel. And the confusing part to him is that his arc sets it really low. Somehow it's calibrating zero reference at like negative 30 or something like that. So it's really, 
it's really kind of bizarre. It doesn't do the same way as Odyssey. So when you run Odyssey, zero is reference. And then if you're under, then that's going to be X amount of dBs below. Of course, if you go above zero, then that's going to be plus uh, above reference. So any thoughts on kind of maybe some guidance there? If his AVM seven or 90 is, is calibrating a lot lower. I mean, it really doesn't. I mean, the truth is it really doesn't doesn't matter matter what the number is. I think the, the reason why we have calibration at reference is so that you can kind of know and be able to compare. Let's say for instance, so if I'm saying I listened to mine at negative 10, effectively Ryan should be able to say, okay, if he listens at, at zero on his processor, then he's 10 decibels louder than what I listen to it. If they're calibrated to reference, that's, that's the way I look at it. So to me, I don't think it's, it's really a big deal what that number is. It just doesn't equate to the same thing as what I am, if that makes sense. And the 75 dB reference is actually 85 85. dB with 105 dB peaks. Mm Mm-hmm. The 75 is something that Odyssey does in order to lower the volume for test tones and other things that happen. Because it's loud. So, I mean, 85, it is very loud. Like, so that's where the 75 dB comes from. Mm-hmm. So when Michael listens at minus 10, he's actually listening at 75 dB with a, with 95 dB peaks. So mm-hmm. he's not listening at setting it to 75. He's actually setting it to 85 for for reference for you for your avm 90 it really doesn't matter right um uh, the number mm-hmm. is arbitrary yeah it like doesn't it, it, it doesn't mean anything where it can get misset and i don't know how arc does this where mm-hmm. it can get set is if you're doing your level matching depending on where you set or where anthem sets the zero point is where that number is going to change like in my storm if i set my zero point, because I can change the volume slider when I'm matching my gains for each one of my channels. Right. If I set that at like 10, mm-hmm. that's where it's going to set everything. But if I set it at 30, right, that's where it's going to set everything then. And I actually like having more headroom because not every mix is mastered the same. That's right? true. Some things I like running way hotter because they're really quiet. So it just depends on what I'm trying to do. So I don't necessarily like having my reference volume, like on my Mm -hmm. storm, be zero. I'd like it to be like at 10, like negative 10 or something, because Mm -hmm. I want to have the plus or minus headroom because I want to be in control. That's how I look at it, at least. Yeah. So the negative 40 actually ain't bad. Yeah. So like I said, it's it's nice. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not like you're calibrating it wrong or anything. It's just going to be your zero like your reference isn't going to be the same as mine so but again i don't have a ton of experience with arc to know what they um how they calibrate that and how that's different to odyssey christian appreciate the five dollar super chat hey ryan when did the m wave sales start i look to get a a 90 to 100 inch or one to two (laughs) arndl subs M wave set, you mean from like demos and stuff? Man, I you're think really so. early on that. Yeah. So last week or last year, you know, of course, a lot of vendors came and they didn't want to ship it back. So Ryan ended up buying it through his company, Ascend AV, and then he ended up selling it through his company. Um, so Christian's like, I want some deals, baby. I love it. You got to watch for a couple months before M wave is when that'll probably all start. When I start stockpiling, it may start a little bit before then. It just depends on when I get stuff locked in from companies. Like if yeah. I get something locked in next month, I may yeah. potentially sell it. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, you won't it get helps. it after M wave, but yeah, but it helps everybody involved. Cause you know, you're getting it. Yeah. I know it's going away. The company knows they have nothing to worry about because it's already sold and yeah, it just, they just helps. Ship it there. Yep. Yeah, it just so that helps. definitely helps for sure. Now, we do have several things that um, there's brand new items. There's also some open box. They still have the same manufacturer warranty. So if you're interested in something even now, we definitely have some stuff even from last year. So just shoot mm-hmm. us an email. Uh, here we go. Uh, MidwestAVExperience.com slash sales, and we'll get you hooked up. And uh, I can't promise there's going to be anything that you're going to want, but we do yeah. have 
quite a bit mm -hmm. of stuff. Still. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh. Trying to unstart. All right. I think I got through all the super chats. All right. Let's head on back up to the top. Sunny says, does anyone here use Dirac? So trying to run a new calibration today and it keeps freezing on phase filter creation. Tried an older version too. You ever run into that phase filter mm -hmm. creation? How long did you wait? Sonny, did you wait a long time? <clears throat> or did you just wait like a minute? Sometimes mm -hmm. it can take a while. Uh, what platform are you on? Meaning what AVR or pre-pro are you on? It times out. Yeah, Mike, Mike says it times out. That could be your internet connection. Hmm. Maybe. Because Dirac has to call home in order to do the calibration. It doesn't do it on the box. Gave me an error saying that it times out. He's got the AV10. Yeah, that a timeout sounds more like an internet connection would mm -hmm. be my guess. But that's just a guess. That's a known issue with the Arkham's. Ryan, yeah. can you elaborate? Is that a like a local issue on the Arkham or is it not able to get in contact with the Dirac servers over in Europe? And do they have a fix for it? Is that like it's a bug? Probably one coming in eventually. Or maybe. Is GSG going to be an M-Wave? Don't know. I hope don't they know. are. We talked to him last year and I know he had some stuff going on. So I'd love to get him there in person. Mm -hmm. Brian, we hope so. Because mm -hmm. last year they just they sent a, several things through Kyle, Life of Bliss. So he built out several of their speakers and brought the big dual 21s. Which, golly, that thing was a monster. It was big. Yeah. It was very big. Jeff says, good evening. I just purchased a JBL 500 soundbar with a downward firing 10 inch sub. Instead of firing into the floor, can you turn it over for more bass response? Thanks. So, yes, down firing sub, change in its direction, maybe firing towards the wall. I'm assuming he's saying, right? Can that impact? I think he's just saying turning it and instead of firing into the floor, fire it into the room. That's what I mean, like turning it towards a wall or turning yeah. it to the I room. I think that's what he means. Yeah. I don't know that that's necessarily going to give you more output. I guess it depends on your floor and what your floor is. <clears throat> if it's carpet, I would turn it. I know I've turned a standard subwoofer. So even just recently, I've got the Arndahl, um mm -hmm. THX 1723 2S. So they're sealed dual opposing 13.8 um, inch drivers. And I mm -hmm. rotated it. I didn't really see any change. Uh, in the past, I've done that with my JTR RS2s. Slight difference in um, how it interacts with the room. So the frequency response changed. I mean, we're talking just a little bit. It wasn't night and day, but I definitely didn't get any change really in SPL. It was just more, I mean, I guess technically it is SPL because that's changing the level. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it wasn't drastic. My advice, Jeff. If you have a calibration microphone like a U mic one, U mic two, Omni mic, Dayton audio mic, something like that, use something like Rue, R E W, Room Q Wizard, and just measure it. Measure it firing down. You'll physically mm -hmm. see how it measures. Measure it turning it sideways, turning it towards the room, to the rear of the room, and just see. And that's really because we're kind of guessing as to how it's going to interact with your room. Is there a boundary gain next to it? You know, or I mean, is there a boundary wall like? Is it near a corner that could impact how that interacts with the room? So I would just mm -hmm. try it different ways and, and see what measures best in your room. But yeah, typically it would... it's a reason why they have them down firing. And I would imagine, I mean, they're trying to get an extra boundary game. I would imagine. I Depends know. on the floor. Try it in different know. configurations, but you got to be able to measure it. Otherwise you're not going to know. And yeah, not a lot of sub brands. Um, use down firing subs. I've only seen a, a handful. Martin Light Logan lets you switch. You can oh, move yeah, that's the right. You're right. forward firing Logan. and down firing. Yeah, yeah I forgot. That's about actually that. a super cool part of their sub design, which I really like. Yeah. Starlight G. This is uh, Jared. Jared says, um, Youth Man from Jared Stro uh, from Starlight G Recording. I'm happy to. Happy for Ryan's new home theater with the Ascendo 
15 inch, 50 inch, golly, I can't read tonight. Subwoofer speaker and other speakers. This theater will be awesome. Absolutely, man. Sorry, we don't awesome. expect much from you, Michael. It's okay. <laughs> Definitely not in the reading department, man. <laughs> I, I still the reading. He also says, I got my 21 inch Dayton Audio Vortex sub and Dayton 18 Ultra Max with four 12 powered subwoofers running in my home theater. Sounds awesome. That sounds awesome for sure. Heck yeah, man. 21 inch. Oh, 18 yeah. inch and 12. That's what I'm talking about. Peter says, Ryan, are you okay? We got that one. And let us know if you were asking about Ascendo or the brand Ascend. Chuck says, has Marantz released direct live bass control on the AV10 yet? I don't think it has. has I don't it? think so. No. Do we have an estimate? Have they no. mentioned anything? Okay. I have to wait and see. K okay, man, what amp are you using to power that 50 inch sub? Ascendo. There's very few it's... amps. The amp itself, mm -hmm. like, like physical wattage. footprint, no, like oh, wattage, wattage twenty thousand watts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's the funny. Theater... I laugh because I'm thinking, you know, when I tell people I got a four thousand watt continuous amp, they're like, "Whoa, that's crazy." Mine's twenty thousand. <laughs> so the theater is going to have two twenty thousand watt amps and two. 10,000 watt amps. Wow. That's awesome. And they're actually not very everything? big. No, that's just for the subs. Subs. Okay. Then the other stuff is going to take, if I do it with the Hypex, it'll take mm -hmm. six, mm -hmm. six channel NC502 chassis. Mm -hmm. So I will have 10. I'll effectively almost have an entire rack just of amplifiers. Mm hmm. Which I, you guys have seen pictures of what I did with the Behringers and stuff before. I've already been there. It's just yeah. this time I'm making sure they have enough power. Yeah. And those of you that don't know what Ryan's building, he's going to be adding a 50 inch Ascendo subwoofer. That guy. That two, guy. two 32 inch subwoofers mm -hmm. and six 21 inch subwoofers. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So the, the room here is actually the room I'm building. This is a render of yeah. the space. Yeah. For anybody that hasn't seen it before. I like it. One row, baby. <laughs> Nicholas says, I'm super pumped for my dual RS2s. Place that on order. Apparently, I'll be in the minority in Australia with some JTR subs. Very cool, man. Excited to have the Aussies get some JTR. I'm excited. Action. Nicholas and I have been talking. I'm really excited for him. Yeah. Um, the RS2s are going to be awesome. Michael whatever. hates his. Yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's all They're phenomenal need. subs guys um i'm gonna butcher your names i'm gonna call it sass how about that sassicant okay i might have got it right sass sassicant do any of you follow the av rant podcast on last week's episode they highlighted an avs thread that jonathan and ryan posted in is that you a good thing mean? or a bad thing i don't know i think he mentioned something below that one but i didn't mm. start that one You'd have to go back up and look at it. Should be starred. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. I'll leave it starred so that you can see it. I'll just go to the next one. When you let when you find it, let me know. Looking. Sir Al says, Is you both did a good job. I found it. I know what thread he's talking about. Okay. So he says you <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to put the old one back up. Put the new one back up there. There you go. You both did a good job explaining why Rel's theory that a sub stack mm -hmm. will target three different types of bass is not accurate. It was it's a fun conversation. <laughs> it so what it was was I'm not gonna name names, but Rel does and by names I mean people, not companies. Mm -hmm. Rel does and wants to do these like stacks of subs, right? Mm -hmm. And then they say, Well, we want to segment the subwoofers for different frequencies, frequencies which yeah. I get right. I had a conversation with John, not Jonathan, but with Jeffrey and Todd. Mm -hmm. And it was explained kind of interestingly to me. And this is something that I am looking forward to experiencing in my theater, but this is how it was explained to me. So I have no objectivity to back this up right now. This is just how it was explained. If you think about a normal speaker, we segment all of these different frequency ranges to different types of drivers, right? The high frequency is given to a tweeter. The mid range is given to the mid woofer 
and then mm -hmm. the low end is given to a woofer, right? So we've already established that you don't want necessarily the same speaker doing everything. It's better to break everything apart. Well, why can that not that same methodology not apply to subwoofers, right? Why not break up the mid bass to the low bass, right? Why not allow different drivers to do that same type of thing? We already mm -hmm. do it with speakers. Why not do it with subwoofers? So I understand the logic of breaking up the different frequency ranges that they were talking about. The problem was there was no objectivity mm -hmm. and it was being done in a way where the things they were talking about that would disappear shouldn't have that had make... any effect. So it was it was all just very subjective. That mm -hmm. that was the problem. The test could have been really good, mm -hmm. but there was no objectivity. There was no objective approach to how the whole thing was done. There was mm -hmm. no anything. It was just this is what we heard. We set it up by ear, and it was just kind of no, like mm -hmm. you can't do that. And I highlighted like, you guys, you're on the audio video science forum. Yeah. You should be doing this objectively, not, well, this is what we heard. And this is why we no. Mm. So that's what that whole thing was about. Yeah. Anyway. Fun, fun conversation there. All right. And then they locked the thread. <laughs> Got too heated. <laughs> Love it. Ivan, good to see you in the chat. Ivan does indeed have his theater room at M Wave. He said, My theater is nowhere near Ryan's, but it will be on the VIP tour at M Wave. So we're super oh, pumped. Oh, yeah. We've got some really cool theaters this year. And what's great about the different theaters is they're just completely different. There's different um, size rooms, different speakers, different layouts, different um, just philosophies going into how they build it. Some of them are going to be really over the top like Ryan's and some of them are going to be a lot more approachable, I guess, if that's the word. Um, and so I'm excited to have Ivan and Ivan did a great job last year of capturing some footage while I was doing some of those home theater experiences at the show. He so did. He was, yeah. So oh. when I was, when I was uploading some of the, the footage, remember he was doing the, um, uh, commentary. He's like, Hey guys, we're at in wave. We're in the, uh, we're in this booth and, and they're setting up right now. So. Oh, yeah. that's cool. It was it was like a bunch of shorts that I did. Maybe so he, Ivan will let you drive his Corvette. Ooh, hey. Why would he let me drive his Corvette? I don't know. Maybe Just if you of... asked him. What? One of the coolest things that Ivan's theater has that I think a lot of people actually haven't experienced um, is he uses an ultra short throw. Absolutely, man. Which I a think is going to be pretty eye-opening for people because it's it does a pretty good job. Yeah. Super and Ivan's cool. made huge strides in his theater. He's the Kansas City group's been bad for him. Yeah, it's it's always a bad influence on. We're the bad for everybody. Oh sure, man. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll check that one. Let me head back over here, all the way back to the top. All right. So question here. So Azur says, "Is RPA subwoofers not better since they're made to play louder?" Great question. For home theater, I'm not a big fan of PA speakers, and the biggest reason they just typically don't dig down very deep. A You're talking PA, PA subs. Yeah, a lot of PA subwoofers. Uh, yeah, not PA speakers because some people use those; they work great, even active ones. But the PA subwoofers, a lot of times, if you look at the frequency response, go to the website, look at where it says frequency response. Most of the time, they're in like the 30s. To me, if your subwoofer can't play down to at least 20, you really try to try to work towards a subwoofer that can at least get you down to 20. Um, a lot of good subwoofers nowadays will do 20, 19, 18, 17, somewhere around there. Um, some of the higher end subwoofers will get down into single digits, but at least try to get to 20. Yes, a lot of times PA subwoofers are loud because think about it. Their, their primary objective typically is music. So normally it's not digging down super deep, um, but they just want to, to add volume, you know? And so they're it, loud. They just don't dig super deep. It's a different stroke for different folks, right? It's It does not mean that a PA sub from like JBL or QSC or something is bad. It's not. They make 
phenomenal speakers, especially in their high end stuff. Yeah. Phenomenal. I mean, I cannot stress that enough. This does not mean that they're bad. Yeah. It's the same thing with professional cinema, right? Think about how big a professional cinema space is. If you try and fill that mm -hmm. with high double digit or low mm -hmm. double digit or single digit yeah. SP, like Hertz frequency, yeah. the power that that would take would be enormous. So you have to kind of change things up. You got to win the battles that you can win and let the other ones go. Okay. It's a lot easier to deal with the 30 and up in mm -hmm. those huge spaces than it is going down because of the power that it needs. You start running yeah. into weird phasing issues. You start running into different EQ problems. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's a different ball game. So <clears throat> no disrespect to those companies. Yeah, I think if that's what you want, they're perfect mm -hmm. because they can get huge amounts of SPL uh, and have mm -hmm. really good output, really good um, sound signal. They're just great speakers. It just depends on what you want. If that's what you want, have at it. If it's so not, along, need something else. So along that lines, is GSG considered a PA sub? No. They dig pretty deep, don't they? Yes. It yeah. depends on what you're going with. Like the Devastators, mm -hmm. no. They're going to be in the 20s, somewhere in there, maybe even 30. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's so more of like, think about JTR's orbit shifter. It's the mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Those yeah. subs are designed for a different application. Mm -hmm. They're designed, like the Devastator is, yeah. for maximum output. And they yeah. don't try and come across as trying to push the signal digits. And if that's mm -hmm. the course you're trying to get to, or the ob objective you're trying to get to, you need to pick a different pathway to go there. Yeah. Because those types of subs are not going to deliver in that application. Yeah. There's very few ported subs that are going to be able to get that low because they require an enormous box mm -hmm. with specific tuning, very, very capable drivers, specific um, port tuning or port design, and it's just hard to do. And that's yeah. why, like the 4,000, there's not really many subs from very many companies that do this. It's mm -hmm. hard to do, and it gets expensive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, da, da, rich good evening michael and ryan just curious about the state of spatial music and home theater how you stream music spatial if you do and speaker arrangement heights versus ceilings atmos versus up mixing to oro etc so do you do any spatial music i don't do any music hardly oh, it's awesome you know it's awesome i still typically i don't do anything right now because my <laughs> all my stuff's in pieces I got a boom box <laughs> Bluetooth speaker. I mean, I got my F 200s in my living room, but um, I don't listen to a lot of music in that space because mm -hmm. it's, I just don't have time recently. Usually when I'm listening to music, I'm working or I'm doing something else and I can just sit down in my theater and sometimes I'll get lost and stuff, but man, yeah. I, I really enjoy it. But the spatial stuff, Jonathan does a lot of it and I really enjoy it. Right. It's coming. It, in a big application it's already here title supports it as long as you have the right player apple right. music supports it i think prime does it's it's big yeah. and apple music music makes it's it so growing. easy yeah. yeah it's growing i've heard right. it at jonathan's but i haven't done anything in, in my it's, own theater it is hard to find certain mods or certain tracks because mm -hmm. a lot of it is just garbage right a lot of it is fed through an algorithm and it's just done by ai and it, it's okay but mm -hmm. the ones that are done well are phenomenal like yeah. phenomenal if they're done well takes everything to the next level a lot of folks in the chat saying they definitely enjoy spatial it's fantastic i don't know that spatial is going to crush two channel <clears throat> maybe yeah that'd be a big stretch but who knows it would might get more people into the space, you know, like interest, like younger guys yeah, just coming into that it. That is true. New, Ryan, new guys, Ryan different. brings up a good point that it's not labeled well a lot of times. And you're right. It's not. Apple Music needs to do something where they label better and they have an easy way to search. I wish they would tag it, right? Mm -hmm. Where they could tag like everything that's Atmos or multi-channel. Just put a tag on it. And let us make it easier to find, but it's, it's a pain. I haven't yeah. looked at title yet. Maybe they're doing it. Yeah. Another, uh, super chat. 
Yeah, Brett, appreciate this. First time super chat. Appreciate that, brother. Now he says, Ryan, how do you plan on this? Is a great question. How do you plan on setting crossovers since you've got three different sub sizes? You got a 50, you got 232s, and 621s. Um, any thoughts there? How are you planning on adjusting those crossovers? It takes a very specific <coughs> pre pro to be able to do it. I mm -hmm. think the Storm and the Trenov are the only ones that can do it mm -hmm. through like, um, expert base management and Chernov's optimizer. So mm -hmm. there's very few options out there that can do it yeah. um, because it's, it's a demanding operation. Uh, the whole feeder is going to be a, a demanding operation with the actives up front and FIR filters and multiple crossovers and all this other stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of tuning. It's going to be days probably of sitting in there um, and going through stuff. But it'll be worth it, I think, in the end. I'm really excited to see it. And the cool thing about all of these, like Storm and Chernoff, is mm -hmm. that you can then have multiple calibrations and very easily flip back and forth between them. Like, I could have 50 different calibrations yeah. and flip back and forth between them. So I could have one with everything the same crossover, one with just the 50, one with the, just the 32s, one with right. just the 21s, all of this different stuff. We could have it where it's only 5.1.2, anything and people can directly compare and contrast like what mm -hmm. am i gaining by adding two more surrounds or three mm -hmm. four more surrounds or going yeah. from two to six tops and these this number of subs what am i getting what happens if i put a brick wall on my frequency response on the subs at 20 hertz instead of getting down to single digits like that really helps people in an objective way and this is part of the reason why i'm building this mm -hmm. it helps people in an objective way decide what they want and if that extra thing is worth them chasing the rabbit for, because if you don't know, mm. this is the biggest part. I think one of the biggest hurdles in this hobby is there's so much that is shrouded in gray, not necessarily like snake oil, but just unknown, right? The fog of war. If you're used to RTS games or something that mm. you don't know. And because of that, it can be very difficult to make a decision. Because it's one thing looking at opinions of other people on like ABS forums, but it's something totally different to know, either listen to somebody that's done it, like mm -hmm. Michael going through all of these different theaters, and or you listening and experiencing it yourself. And I think that's really important. So somebody, I think, was asking if they could rent the theater and something like, yeah, sure. But mm -hmm. I am, and I posted this on a Facebook post a while ago, the theater is open. Like, I want to be able to share it with as many people as possible because, and I tell the vendors that are involved with this too, that the theater is built for the industry. It's not built just for me. So if another dealer wants to bring a client in, I do not care. I want people to have an objective and as good of an experience as they possibly can. And that goes for everybody, not just me as a dealer. And if I can sell something, that's not what this is for. This is for people to enjoy, people to experience, and people to up their own knowledge so that they can make their own knowledgeable decisions instead of being reliant on other people's opinions and whatever metrics or forum posts or whatever they're viewing. Because mm -hmm. if you can rely on yourself and be confident in a decision you're making because of experiences you've had, you're going to be a lot more satisfied with the outcome, I think. Um, yeah. And that's a, another big issue in the in the space. Sorry, I went down that off of. That's okay. You know, <clears throat> a couple other questions while we're on that, um, since we're talking about it. So you're wanting to have one row of mm -hmm. theater seats, probably mm -hmm. three seats. Um, so his question is, is would four overhead speakers be a better utilized than six? Why'd you go Possibly. with six? So I can change it. Mm. Right. It's, it's the ability to show people exactly yeah. what I was just talking about to be able to show what is the difference of going from four to six? Is it worth it? Nah. Should I be even considering this? Yeah, that's what it's about, and that's why there's going to be six. And then there was another one the Ascendo 50 subs go down to one hertz, and your mic does maybe max of three hertz. So, how do you tune it? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> do we have microphones that can go down to one hertz? Do you know? Well can any of the earthworks do that yeah because you have earthworks jonathan has um omni mic i think at that low i don't know that it's really going to matter it, it, it actually doesn't matter because 
Storm and Trinov can't EQ anything below like 10 hertz, okay. 6 hertz. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Good question, though. That's a great question. Most people don't have that worry. You know, how can I measure down to one hertz? Well, the same things in your room. You're down that low, not uh, flat. Five. I don't know. I'm you're flat, flat five. at five, yeah, but you're pushing I, something down there. Yeah, there's something. I don't know how far down I am at one hertz, but yeah, I pretty much just. At that point, you can just do it by feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm looking right now at the Earthworks. All right. While you look that up, I'll pull up Jay Green. Appreciate the $10 super chat. This hello could use your help trying to decide between Arndall 1723 versus Martin Logan F200s. Both of them great speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, currently have the Martin Logan Motion on. So he's got the 40 XTIs. Uh, the room is 20 by 20 by nine foot ceiling. So um, a little bit wider than my room, a little bit deeper than my room. Um, I think both of those are going to be capable speakers. I love the F200s. Um, I've got the, I'm actually working on, I was hoping to have my review of the 1723s this week. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've had my grandson over here for six days, dude. It has been the most unproductive <laughs> six days of my life, but it's been fun. So we had a good time with him. Um, man. So number one, they're going to have two very different. I haven't put them in the same room to hear, like, like do some AB comparisons. I've got the Arndall 1723s in my theater room, completely um, acoustically treated mm -hmm. in the living room. Got the F 200s, that system room is untreated at all but again completely different sounds one's using a soft on tweeter the other one's using a folded motion um i still like the, i mean i love the f200s i'll be honest i'm really really you and i one. both have them yeah the martin logan b100s which are the bookshelf version of the f200 mm -hmm. one with svs the speaker comparison beat out arendelle came in third mm -hmm. they beat him out and by a considerable margin i mean it wasn't mm -hmm. it wasn't close so like a blind comparison in a blind comparison a using a lazy susan to put the speaker in the exact same place using the same amps same cables all that stuff the martin logans came out so take that for what it is mm -hmm. uh, in speaking about the f200s if you are interested in a demo deal i have some that you got a pair find home. I do. Oh. I've got a pair of walnut and I have one black, but so you'd need to buy its better half. So you have a single black and a pair single of walnut. Single black and a pair of walnut. Okay. Yeah. Right. So if you're interested, shoot they're Ryan. They're fantastic, email. man. They are, they're one of those speakers that Just join has the no level. business being in the price point it's in. It's really good. Yeah. Really good. And it's actually one of the most SPL capable speakers that Martin Logan makes behind mm -hmm. the the statement forties, which yeah. are the masterpiece level on walls. I think what I'm loving the most out of them. And so I had this experience when I reviewed the 60 XTI. So that's just the big brother to your forties. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. But at that time I couldn't let go of my clips. You know, I knew the mid range sounded better. Now to me, I had a little bit more bottom end on the dual tens from the clips, mm -hmm. the R seven threes, but I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the mid range was definitely better. And I even loved the way they looked. I had the mahogany that they sent me, and I'm like, ah, okay. And I then I sent them back. And then um the um F two hundreds came along and I'm like, it just mm -hmm. it was like nostalgia. I'm like, now I remember what I really loved about these speakers. And so clips are so good. And they look so good. I love the the rounded grills and stuff that they did and the yeah. accents with the different colors in comparison to the surrounds, the different color. It's, they're really cool. Yeah. Super great speakers though. But I, I'll be honest, I'm a huge fan. Now again, Arndall makes some great speakers. They do. But um, if you can, man, listen to both of them. Cause again, they're going to have a different sound signature. Um, I think the, the Arundel are more neutral mm. than the Martin Logan's. The Martin Logans are not neutral and they know mm -hmm. that, uh, but people prefer it mm -hmm. supposedly. So yeah. take that for what it is. So uh, da, 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 let's pull up here. 
And guys, I'm still starring. Don't worry. We're going through these in order. So if your question mm -hmm. hasn't been answered, we will get to it. I promise. Tito, I'll come to you. I just saw your super chat. Uh, Nicholas says, you two guys literally look like you're sitting in the same room next to each other. Yeah, because there's really no division, no. right? There. Oh, there it is. It disappears yeah. right there. You're trying to poke my ear. I was just going to tickle your... No, we're not doing that. Mm. You, uh, don't oh, tell people what we do on our own time when you're over here. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. Tito, appreciate the $5 super chat. He says, just want to thank you guys for your time and answering all of our questions. Man, we love doing it. We really do. I love the community. You guys, I mean, think about it. Without you, it'd just be me and Ryan sitting here talking to ourselves. So we I mean, really we do that it. anyway. We get a ton of engagement on this podcast and it just shows that. And, and the cool thing is we don't care what your question is. If you think it's the dumbest question that, you know, you really should have no business asking that question, ask that question. Cause like somebody else is going to ask it guarantee there's somebody well they may not ask it i guarantee there's somebody in the chat going i wish somebody would ask it because i don't want to ask it i see that all the time on reddit where people will post something yeah this is a dumb question so flame me or whatever and yeah. then they ask it and here i am like 15 yeah. years later looking for some response and come across it and that's yeah. the answer i needed yeah and somebody thought it was dumb so 100%. do not think that your question is going to be dumb yeah worst case we're going to tell you that it's asked all the time but right. don't think yeah. that it's dumb because yeah. the community more than likely needs to hear it. And that's it's really important. And think about this. We always have new guys coming in, ladies coming into the hobby. And so they're going to innately have those same questions mm -hmm. like by default, because they don't have any answers. They're looking for answers and that's why they're here. That's why they're on forums. That's why they're in Facebook groups and they're asking these questions. So we want to be a resource to you. So Tito definitely appreciate the love and support. And that's your first super chat. So we greatly appreciate that, brother. Well, and one more thing I'll say on that is, guys, don't hate on people for asking the same question over and over. Obviously, yeah. if it's the same guy, yeah. but this the community the asking time. the same yeah. because they may be, may be the first time they're here. They don't know. Yeah. And it's they feel like they want that question answered. And if you see it and you know mm -hmm. the answer, and yeah, we talk answer. about it all the time, answer it for them. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be the guy, literally, when I started my journey. I mean, I've been into home theater for a long time, but when I was started building my home theater here in this home 17 years ago, I was in the clips forum literally all day, every day asking questions. And I was the guy going, okay, what about this? How does this work? I don't understand this. And then eventually I became one of the guys that was answering the new guys that were coming in. And then near the end of my time there, it was, I'm letting the guys that I was kind of helping you know, a year ago, look at you being there. a teacher, look at you, you. Know like you just pass it on. And so I love the fact that Ryan brings up, Hey, if you've got an answer to it, share it in the chat. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. The community helping each other. Chris says, where's the balloon button? There's no balloon button. Ryan can do a peace sign and it'll look at there. <laughs> it's on command. <laughs> well, I figured it out. That's it took right, us dude. a long time. I, you dude. and I were just talking one day and I just go, wait, he was like, why is it out. doing this? And what was happening is, is he was doing this, just kind of relaxing. Here like this. And see it would see it. the peace sign, and then it would it would trigger it. Of course, now it doesn't want to do it. It doesn't see it. Hello? Normally, you don't have headphones on, so maybe it's confusing it. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Man, you guys are dropping the super yeah. chats. You get Mike yet? Uh, Let me drop in the two here. bucks. Hang on a second. All right, so let me unstart that one. Yeah, I really wish StreamYard would group all of the Super Chats together. Man, that's a feature that would be great because then we could have a different tab, but it's mm -hmm. it puts them in all the starred, and it doesn't even put it Maybe at the top. Maybe we need to look at uh, <clears throat> Restream Mike, and see if they Mike, do it. it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Mike, appreciate the $2 Super Chat. Appreciate the support, brother. Zim, five dollar or Canadian? Yeah, five. I don't know how do you say that? Five Canadian? Because it's not five dollar yeah, Canadian. It is. Whatever. Five Canadian. Appreciate it, brother. He says hello from Canada. Would uh, what would be a good custom two point one setup for electronic music? Cool. Um, I like my highs high and my lows low. So it sounds like he kind of wants a more forward sounding speaker. He likes the highs kind of bright. That's dependent on good bottom end. 
that's dependent on budget. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go back to the F200s, man. Mm -hmm. They do exactly what he's talking about. They're a little yeah. bit forward in the highs. They push the high frequency just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they've got three eight inch for the low. Yeah, it's a good solid. I mean, Nick was can... dropping the RTJ towers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You're right. Yeah, that'll do it. But we kind of yeah. nine times the budget there. Mm, true. F200 yeah, so that, to something it, else. Zim, it's always hard to say, like, what speaker would you recommend kind of thing? Can you give us a budget? It's so crazy because the reality is each one of us are going to recommend something different. And most of it's going to be what we own because that's what we like. That's what our ears say sounds great. Uh, prime We've example. heard a lot of speakers, though. I have. But think about this. I tend to like horns. You don't like horns for the most part. Like no. if you had to choose typically like your standard horn. You're not a huge fan of J JTR. I mean, you like them, but you're not like, I don't think it's I necessarily horns. I think it's more that I don't like compression drivers. Okay. So maybe it's not horns compression. I drivers. think that's what I figured out. And maybe okay. the reason I like the black swans is because it's not a compression driver. Hmm. I, I don't See, think. I was think I was thinking it was though. Maybe it is. Cause maybe I don't know. 1.75 inch compression. Is it? I think it is. But it's a four inch piece of beryllium. I don't, it, who cares what it's made out of? Maybe it's still it is. It's I'm still just saying it's it's enormous. Yeah. yeah. Let's go find out. All right. He's going to look that up. I'm going to look that up. But yeah. I, yeah. Need him. budget. Okay. He so says no, no budget. budget. Yeah. So, uh, so without a budget, I mean, not without a budget. So, all right. Something no that's a little forward on the top end. Now, the good thing is he, he does have a point one, so we don't have to worry about getting massive towers necessarily because he can get a quality subwoofer to handle some of those lows. I mean, I'm going to say what's been suggested. The RTJ, and now that there's no budget, I'm going to say this seriously. <laughs> the the yeah. RTJ towers mm -hmm. yeah, or the Black Swans. Mm. If you're really going no budget, Right, yeah. Those would probably be the two that I would mm. I would suggest. And those are both, I mean, capable of stupid output, incredibly detailed, um, really high fidelity. I've heard both of those systems. Um, I agree. I mean, those are phenomenal. Absolutely. Well, mm. It's a compression driver. It's just four yeah. inches. Yeah. So I guess I can't say that I don't like compression drivers. So that's not it. I don't, but, I guess okay, I so don't like horns. So think about this though. Even, even just you saying that it goes to show you at all possible, listen to as many speakers as you can. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because and I, I went into that room thing, yeah. and you knew this. I went into that room thinking I wasn't going to like them. Mm -hmm. And then I sat down and just went, Oh no. Oh, I honestly and went that, in there. Think, I saw that 50 inch and it looks cool, but I'm just going, this I is going to sound yeah. cheesy. I it don't did know not. Why. No, not at all. It did not. I, I had somebody comment recently. They're like, yeah, that 50s, it's going to be like bloated bass and it's just mm -hmm. going to sound muddy. I'm like, well, why? It's barely moving, dude. Why would it sound muddy? We had to go check if it was moving. Like you literally had to go stand next to it. You still yeah. couldn't tell. Yeah. You had to touch it, moving, man. You had and to touch it into that room. Yeah. And you could, you could hear the windows back behind you going as they were shaking. And it was, it wasn't even trying. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it wasn't muddy at all, man. Really high fidelity. And again, it, it just surprised me. It really, really did. And so really good. if at all possible, go to a local show, you know, we've got M wave. I know I saw a couple of people, that mentioned they're coming to M wave. We've got actually speaking of that I didn't even mention this. I made a post about it earlier. We have sold 80 out of 161 home theater experiences. So we're halfway filled. So if you guys are considering coming to M wave and if you're wanting to get in on one of the, or even more of the um, home theater experiences, definitely head up to the website, Midwest AV experience, check those out. They're all on there. You can see which ones are getting close to filling up. I manually went in there and I put sold out, sold out. 
getting close to being sold out kind of thing just to give you a heads up so you don't have to click on every single one so i thought that'd make it a little bit easier so um but yeah super excited about it man but great question there man that is a great question all right back to star did i miss any i just want to make sure cool got that one okay perfect all right head back up rich hey chat just curious of your opinion anyone up mixing the oro just bought an arkham 21 so i could do oro 13.1 with voice of god but also have a 7.2.4 atmos system so joe techno dad fomo etc love oro mix music and home theater so he's doing home theater as well as music so are you a big fan are you do you like um voice of god what are your i mean not voice of god but or 3d thoughts on that we got to go back and do mike frost okay where was, was it that at? a mike was that a we'll come back to you rich well hold on oh okay so he put in two dollars and then asked a question oh I i'm sorry did I'm yeah that was sorry. that was us we'll come back to you rich all right cool there you go thank you for saying that ryan uh you guys got to realize there is a ton of conversation going on over in this chat it is fun trying to keep up all right let's see i'm trying to find where that is because it's bigger easier for me to see over here Hey guys, have you had a chance to audition any of the Golden Ear speakers yet? I wonder how they compare to Martin Logan F100 and oh, 200. If not, why not? I don't know if I've heard any Golden Ear speakers over the years. I have. have I've heard them in Expona. I heard a sub. I did. Now, Expona is not necessarily the best place to audition speakers, mm -hmm. but everything's in the same kind of room. So I don't think it's necessarily the worst if you're comparing them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly last year when i went to expona the f200s were one of my favorites yeah. i mean it was and i'm not I, I know i'm a dealer so take that as bias if you will Here's the deal, guys. i'm not a dealer and i really like this series i mean when martin logan sent them to me i'm going this was the first time that i'm going these might be replacing my clips yeah they're really yeah. good and i mm -hmm. will tell people when i don't like a speaker i have no problem sure saying that yeah even if it's something that i like i did it, it's okay he's saying they're similar in technologies yeah why so they both use like a an amt okay i just think martin logan's got a better grip on it mm -hmm. i think they've <laughs> just got a better way around it and they know what kind of is going on with that yeah. technology i think a little bit better yeah um, when i heard the golden ears i was kind of thinking yeah these are okay and then you yeah. hear the martin logans and it's different yeah so tarhoya says um even listening to the f200 is at best buy so they sound great I, and that's saying I, a lot because it's not i think the best a big part of that is because of the limited dispersion mm. they take a so big part of the room out of the equation Think about this. All right. So my room, I told you, my mm, living room, your living room. Yeah. Treated at all. It is an echo chamber. And that's interesting because I love the mid range. Well, you remember that at, at M wave, right? People mm -hmm. notice that if they sat too far off axis, they're like, I don't like the speaker anymore. But yeah. as soon as they moved in, they're like, this is my favorite speaker. So mm -hmm. the limited dispersion, both in the horizontal and the vertical, is something that Martin Logan is doing intentionally to limit room interaction and to make it more like their electrostatics. Because the electrostatics are like 30 Narrow. zero. 30 zero. <laughs> there are, and then you've got the um, motion series, which is like 50 mm -hmm. or 60 and probably 20 or 30 something like that realistically i know they say different in the measurements but it's not mm -hmm. that so i think that's actually a big part of it and you brought up a good point michael that may be why you yeah, like them so much in your room. yeah and but every that was the first time the 60 xti's that was the first time i'd really heard at least a motion tweeter a uh, fold of motion in my room or in my home i've heard them probably at trade shows and stuff but that's it's always different there so interesting I, it literally just clicked that maybe that's why possibly it's not interacting as much in my room mm -hmm. mm, so i'm getting a clear mid-range i like it 
Uh, Focal Touch, appreciate the $5 super chat. He says, hey, guys, I'm trying to decide between the Klipsch 120THX versus the RP1400 SW. What is your suggestion for me? Great question. So the 120. That's old. That the, yeah, I think that's the R. There's no that? comparison here. The RP1400. Yeah, the, the new ones, they've literally completely redesigned. Um, Clips. Just looking real quick. Okay, that's the SPL120. I couldn't remember. I didn't review that. I reviewed the one prior to that, which was the, oh, golly. Now I'm forgetting. It was a 15-inch version. So that's mm -hmm. a 12-inch version. I forget the model number. Forgive me. Um, yeah, I would 100% all day long tell you to look at the new subwoofers. Again, we ended up, I say we, Ryan bought one for M-Wave. This past year, 2023, everybody been asking, hey, how did the new one sound? We don't know. Clips hadn't it did one. really well. I was on the list. Never got one. So Ryan's like, you know what? We need one. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I'm going to buy one. So he bought one. We did an A-B comparison, blind behind a curtain. And I know in my notes, that Joker sounded extremely clean, handled low frequencies, great, didn't bottom out at all. Um, just really nice sounding. And a lot of people have said the same thing. Yep. Um, not a lot of reviews out there because they didn't really see, you know, too much out there. But Audioholics has a review on it with measurements. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah, check it out. And it got almost five stars, four and a half in both categories from them, yeah. which is big. Yeah. For a clips. Yeah. Because clip. I mean, I've again, I've been a fan of clips for a long time since I was a teenager. Always love their sound, but we all know, even the Clips guys, though, they're not known for their subwoofers. They, um, they're they okay. They're not great. They were just okay. So the RP, the new reference Premier subwoofers are really, really making some waves. And I think Clips knew that going into it. They're like, look, we've kind of been at the bottom in the subwoofer market. I mean, think about this. Even in the Clips forum, a lot of guys would say, hey, get Clips. But then they would always recommend something like SVS, subwoofers. And so they were always recommending something else other than clips. And clips are like, oh, maybe we need to look into that, like seriously. So they redesigned from the bottom up, from the ground up. And, you know, they've got, a, I think, a five-year warranty on them. So, yeah, I'm a fan. I mean, I really, really like what the new subwoofers are doing. Again, we don't know long-term how are the amps going to hold up. Uh, they've had some amp issues over the, the years, but uh, again, they're willing to back it up with a five-year warranty. So I think you're, you're pretty safe there. So, all right, let me come down here and check that one. Michael, appreciate the $2 super chat. Did you see Techno Dad's new setup? It's fantastic. I have not actually. It's all right. So three years ago. I was watching everybody in this space, like all of the content. Same. Now I'm struggling just to make content, to be honest with you. I've got so many different things going on with M-Wave. I've got another business adventure uh, starting in probably January, February. Um, we've got my Patreons. I do a weekly, uh, well, actually, I guess a bi-weekly Zoom with them. So it's getting harder and harder for me to watch. Uh, other people's content so cool i'm glad he's got a new setup that's awesome uh, but i haven't seen that one look here all the way back up to the top man there's a whole bunch of these questions mm -hmm. check that one all right cool bruce says so i have a Klipsch 504 center channel and i love how it sounds it's got it upstairs behind an acoustic screen but hate how it sounds in my temporary setup is this because the screen is diffusing the brightness? Great question. So he likes it upstairs behind an acoustic screen. I don't know if it's so much the screen that is changing versus maybe the environment, the room that it's in. I mean, the screen's uh, going to do a little bit. I don't think it's like diffusing the sound. I mean, it'll it, lower it, higher frequencies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's going to attenuate the top end a little bit, sure. It's probably uh, his room. That's, that would be my thing. 
Oh, I see what he's saying. Diffusing the brightness. Okay, yeah. So he's saying kind of trims off the top end. The Possibly. Yeah. Um, it depends on if you like the brightness. If you don't, then that might be very well why you're enjoying that. So, but it could be room interaction. That's it's kind of hard to guess why. You know, you're hearing the difference, but um, and I don't think it. All right. So here's my thought too, real quick. So yes, when you put a speaker behind an acoustically transparent screen, even though it's acoustically transparent, it's not 100% transparent. There's some usual attenuation. Basically, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of trimming off the top end. But my understanding is like your EQ, like your audio calibration, is going to be able to correct that. So And, it, and we're talking, it's just very, very minor. I mean, it might be like a dB or 2 dB, maybe. On One to three dB, power. typically, depending on what it is and what the screen yeah. material is, and then you've got to hear that. You know, uh, I mean, you can hear three dB but with like a home theater things. thing going on. Like everything's happening, it'd be hard. Yeah, and you can EQ it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm you saying. Can boost yeah. it. So, yeah. but if he's not right, then potentially, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of variables with this. Sure. It, it's probably something not just your screen. Yeah. Evangeliste says uh, manual calibration versus automatic calibration. Ryan would say manual all day. I would say manual all day. If so, you know how to yeah, we, I actually had a conversation a, with uh, a couple people about this. There's pros and cons to both. I think for the most part, manual is superior in a lot of facets. It can be if you know what you're doing. It can be, but there are things that, EQ on the higher end is going to be able to do. And when I say higher end, I'm like, um, well, really everything. But mm -hmm. in my experience with like Dirac and Optimizer mm -hmm. from Turnoff, mm -hmm. they can do things with phasing that you're not going to be able to do manually. Mm -hmm. So it's a give and take, right? I can potentially get more accurate if I spend the time to do mm -hmm. it manually. But you're talking <clears throat> multiple days to yeah. do this. Whereas something like Dirac or Room Optimizer could go through very quickly and mm -hmm. do get very good results. So it just it just depends on what you're trying to do. And the other problem that part that Michael brought up is to do manual correctly, you got to understand what's going on and what hap is going on when you look at frequency responses and your measurements and impulse and phasing and all kinds of other stuff. You have to understand what you're looking at. And if you don't mm -hmm. or don't have a huge grip on it, you can potentially do more harm than good. So room EQ, I think, is very good for a big part of the industry <laughs> as long as it's doing things correctly. I think manual EQ, at the end of the day, if enough time is spent with it, is mm -hmm. going to win. No. And there's not some ridiculous phasing problem going on in the room that you yeah. aren't going to fix. I got to chuckle. Bruce says... Before Michael watched the content, now he is the content. He <laughs> oh, is. Man. I try, man. I try to make He's as much as I can for you guys. Did you I'm think you'd be in this fun. position when you first started? No, dude. Seriously, when I when I first, I've got a video I think on it, um, kind of where like my whole journey on this YouTube thing. I'll just give you the real Cliff Notes version. Six years ago, Clips was coming out with RF7 version 3. I had version 1 and 2. And everybody in the Clips forum was asking, hey, I wonder how these are going to sound. Should I upgrade? Is it going to be better? What's going to be different? How are they going to look? And so I reached out to Clips on the Facebook uh, on Facebook Messenger and said, hey, I'm a, a moderator in your Clips forum. I've got three La Scalas. My whole home theater is Clips. I've got Clips bookshelf speakers for... Uh, my office setup, I've got, my daughter's got clip speakers. My son's got clip speakers. Needless to say, I'm a fan. Um, everybody's asking, how will these compare? I've got a unique position. I own one and two. You're coming out with three. Would you be interested in sending me a pair? And I can make some cool videos on it. I'll show size dimensions. I'll talk about what I hear. I'll do some comparisons. They sent it to me. I made 15 videos on that one pair of speakers. And I'm like, this is kind of cool. This is fun. So then I reached out to SVS. They sent me some of their speakers and subwoofers. And then I reached out to um, Parasound, I think was the next brand. And then Emotiva, Emotiva, and then just on and on. And so I never would have dreamed, number one, I would be doing this full time. 
for sure. Never dreamed that I would have the opportunity to fly to another country, paid for, um, take my spouse and do a home theater tour over there and make a couple of videos for a gentleman. I never dreamed that I would be going to, you know, AV events. I never dreamed that I would be starting my own AV event with Ryan called M Wave. So there's so many things that I never what a dreamed. Terrible event that is. <laughs> but I never dreamed that I would I would be doing this. But it's something that I literally have been passionate about since, well, literally since I was probably 16 years old. Because I remember getting in my car, driving to Sound Sound Advice. I was about to say Sound Waves. That's a different company. Sound Advice in Tampa would drive 30 minutes over there every single weekend and almost without fail. I would go over there and I would listen to clips on theaters. I would listen to, I think they had Bowers and Wilkins at that time and some of the theater rooms. Might have even had some Martin Logans. But I would go in there and just drool as a 16-year-old going, man, I make four twenty-five an hour. I'll never be able to afford any of this. So I'm going to come here every weekend and just enjoy it. And so I you love are yeah, and I've loved home theater ever since. And so, no, I never dreamed that I would, I'd be doing this. But I'm so excited, I'm, I, and I truly feel blessed. I really, really do. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to hang out with all of you cool guys and, um, and just share my passion, my enthusiasm, my excitement for home theater, and hopefully just help inspire you and and provide educational things by having guys like Ryan and doing events like M Wave and so that you can kind of hear for yourself and experience things firsthand to figure out what you want to do in your own home theater. So, but I'm just grateful, man. So that was a cliff notes version of it. I'm going to answer a couple quick questions. Yeah. Here. Hit it, man. So Brian on. asked, so many DSP is not better than room correction from multi-sub. That's not necessarily true. What I mean by this is if you have no knowledge of what to do, mm -hmm. room EQ all the way. Yeah, if you have up. an understanding about how to make it work, <clears throat> mini DSP, every day of the week. The yeah. problem though, is if you don't know, you can potentially do more harm mm -hmm. using mini DSP than what room EQ is going to give you. So there it's a pro and con it's, mm -hmm. you got to weigh how much your knowledge base is and your confidence on doing something manually. Yeah. And then the other question is MD had MW had, and this was random because I was looking mm -hmm. at this. Um, does this, has Ascendo stopped making active speakers like the 12 inch? No, they still make active stuff. The reason I am doing passives is because it would take too many channels for me to do active. I would need like 72 channels or something mm -hmm. insane. And though I do have a screw loose, I, I'm i not totally falling apart yet. So it's... Oh, dude. It's barely hanging on, though. We it's, got it. It, it's rusty, but it's it's hanging on still. It's awesome. Uh, Rick says, per Ryan's recommendation, I ordered a second subwoofer. My Marantz Cinema 50 has a second setting for subwoofer, so it's called directional. My question for Ryan is, would you recommend the directional setting for subwoofers? That's kind of a new thing. And um, do you know what the directional, like what they're trying to accomplish? The orientation there? of the sub? Not so much the orientation. I heard a demo um, at, I think, Audio Advice Live. It was the first time I'd ever heard it. And so typically when you hear bass in your room, it's just omnidirectional. You know, you just hear it all around you. It's, if there's an explosion, it's just here. If you hear a gunshot, it's just here. I was watching, um, man, what was it? I think it was like a, kind of like a, oh goodness, what was it? Jurassic Park, I think, mm -hmm. was the demo. And the dinosaur went from, whatever it was, I think it was the dinosaur, went from, let's see, I guess here, went from the left speaker, like off, off screen, came across, mm -hmm over to here i heard in my brain bass come from the right subwoofer or left i guess or whatever and then i heard bass just from the other subwoofer it oh blew my, that's what it means by, by this is, i thought he was talking about this is a setting on the subwoofer this is a setting in the morantz inside the morantz yeah. yeah so this is a new thing that's coming <clears throat> morantz i don't think they've fully fleshed this stuff out yet but it allows you to Morantz and Denon are going to be kind of on the more entry level of the capabilities of this, but it allows you to localize subwoofers, which mm -hmm. can be super cool. It was different. I was like, whoa, I never yeah, experienced that before. The 
Storm and the Trinov can also do this. You can tie subwoofers to specific channels. The Trinov allows you to offload low frequencies to more capable speakers, depending on the crossover points. My recommendation is exactly what Tony said, is to try it. To do it right, though, can take a lot of troubleshooting EQ. Because remember, if you're doing directional bass, multiple subs are no longer playing together. So you, mm. you're potentially going to worsen your frequency response because part of what makes the frequency response more flat is you're having multiple subs not co-located playing at the same time to fix nulls, to fix um, gains, to fix all kinds of different stuff. So by taking that away and doing something directional, you really need to start with a really good room and each sub needs to be fairly flat to begin with otherwise you may introduce some and i'm just letting you know all the pros and cons you mm -hmm. may introduce some other abnormalities in your listening environment so yes it can be cool but you can also take away the benefits of having multiple subs mm -hmm. in your theater at the same time yeah so the answer brett's i'm not sure i don't this know Emirates do that with independent four subs i'm not sure i think it can but i don't know I'm not, it's kind of a new technology. Um, nobody's, I say nobody. It's it's just a new feature, I guess, if you want to call it. So, so Tony says, usually the LFE is all the subs together. Direction comes in with the crossovers. Yeah, that was what, that's the only thing that I could figure out is that maybe somehow they're, they're utilizing higher frequencies because Stuff that's 80 hertz and below, for the most part, you can't tell where that sound's coming from. Mm. So that's kind of omnidirectional. Like if yeah. I mean, for the most part, if it's blended in with your the rest of your system, now if it's if it's cranked up and it's higher than your other speakers, you're going to be able to localize it even at 80 hertz. But for the most part, it, it's hard to tell when it's blended. So, but I don't know. It, it, maybe they're doing some voodoo magic. I don't know. Yeah, so Tony's saying that again, it's a crossover. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hit this one. The Ender says Michael doesn't listen to music or watch movies in his theater. His theater is exclusively used for content of this channel. Doesn't even so, use it for that. Yeah, whatever. So the cool thing is, all right, so not the cool thing, the difficulty, the challenge. And I share this in a video. The challenge is I'm constantly reviewing, swapping stuff out. My system, I always feel like, is the least calibrated system because I'm always unplugging this, plugging this back in, changing this setting. And then sometimes, like, when I put my stuff back together, I got to remember to put all my stuff back. Fortunately, Odyssey has the app, and so I can reload all my stuff. So that's made it easier over time. But used to, I had to remember, okay, I need to change this crossover, do this, do this, do this, or rerun Odyssey completely, which was a huge, you know, time commitment. So there is challenges there being a content creator because most of the time my theater room has lighting. It has my camera in there. It has speakers in there. It has subwoofers in there, has AVRs, different things like that. So when my own family say, hey, dad, can we use the theater room tonight? I'm like, uh, can you give me 30 minutes? And I'll go clean it up and move some stuff. So that's always the challenge. I'm really um, hoping for the day that you're able to have a it'll review come. room yeah, and your theater come. room. You and I talked yeah. about it recently, but it's, yeah. I can't wait for you, man. That's, yeah. I mentioned that in the video that that is like just my biggest challenge. Cause oh, it, man. it does make it challenging for me, but Jessica and I every week consistently, we go in there and we watch survivor and it, this is kind of cool. So normally Jessica, she doesn't care where we listen to, you know, and watch movies, but almost every time she's like, can we watch in the theater room? Like, yeah, girl, let's hook it up, man. Even if I got to unplug some stuff or, you know, change some stuff. Um, but yeah, so I enjoy it. I just don't, I don't listen to a lot of music. So, but movies, we do watch movies in there. Um, but yeah, a lot of times it's somebody else's equipment. I don't get to enjoy mine. There have been times where, well, prime example, I've had the Arundels in there for a couple months. I haven't even hooked up. I mean, my JTRs are sitting back there going, Dude, we're getting bored sitting behind this screen and never getting any use, you know? So it'll be it'll be nice to get that back. So I'm trying to get that video out, I'm trying to get the, uh, I've still got the Martin Logans to do. And yes, I see your comments about the 
Where is it at? Um, oh my goodness, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? The AVM set. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Where's that AVM 70 root? Love all your old videos comparing. One stuff. day. I, I've shown Ryan my list. I, I got I just got way behind. And it's one of those things that once you get behind, it's just as a content. You're catching creator, up. I am, but it's real slow. You know, it's really slow. Because again, so think about this though. Five years ago, when I started my channel six years ago, I literally was just getting one thing in and I review it and crank it out. I'd get a couple of things in every once in a while. I'd have a bunch of products, maybe like five or six, but I could knock that out in a month or a month and a half, two months or whatever, and then get some new stuff in. Now there's just, there's just more complexity. I mean, think about it. I'm now going to three, three shows a year. So Cedia, I'm making typically 10 videos there. I'm going to Audio Advice Live. Amazing. I love their show. So typically I'll make some videos for them, seven or eight, maybe more. Then I have my own show, me and Ryan with M Wave. So that's a huge undertaking. So I've got Dude, that. That's a crappy one. Don't. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely, I mean, there's just a lot of things that have changed since six years ago. Now, as far as what I do, I still am reviewing products. I still am doing comparisons. I still um, I'm having the same amount of fun that I was. There's just a lot more on my plate, if that makes sense. So, um, but I'm trying, basically what I've tried to do is just tell companies, Hey, look, I would love to review your stuff, but give me a couple months. Let me get caught up. There's no reason. Even Ryan has asked me, he's like, Hey man, can I send you this? And I went, no, man, not right now. Let me get out from, from under this. Then we can talk about if you got some stuff you want me to review. Cause ready it, to it bury you again. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't help when I just got oodles. But um, but yeah, one day I'll have an editor that's not here yet. Uh, one day I'll have a dedicated space that's vision. Um, all of those things would help out tremendously, and I could crank out more content for you guys. So, uh, da -da -da -da, let's go. Big Street Cinema. Uh, any news about the Ascendo Six Pro? Not yet. Okay. Um, M MT Young Percussion. Any chance uh, the demos we're going to see at M Wave will be published? Not yet. What does that mean? He's asking demo. for the demo list of like content that'll be published because people oh, okay, will watch okay. it at home. It'll probably It'll come out a month or two before. Okay. So he'd like to kind of get a preview on his home so he can kind of compare what he's hearing. That makes exactly. sense. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cool idea. Rob says, question, what kind of gauge speaker wire do you use? I use 14 gauge in all of my system, in my living room as well as my theater room. Ryan, what yeah. are you going to run with those new ones? You buy new cables? It depends on the run. I mean, a big part of it is going to be how much power I'm utilizing. It's mm -hmm. probably going to be all 12 gauge okay. just to not worry about it. The subs, the 32 and the 50 are probably just going to be 10 aug solid core copper. Yeah. Just... That's just cool. big, beefy, solid core, not braided, just because mm. needs the power. I get it. Mike says, uh, why did they make uh, DLBC available on the Cinema 40 and not the AV10? Interesting. They did? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know it came out yet. A good question to ask. I think I saw somebody say that um, their Audioholics gene... They're going to have somebody from Massimo, which is That'd be good. Old, old Sound United. Uh, it might be a great question to ask on their their podcast or live stream. Maybe different DAX or decoders or something in the two. Yeah. Scott says, Ryan, why did you go for the 50 and not the 80? Are you leaving room for a future upgrade? The 80 would not fit down my stairs. I'm hoping this is in game for you, man. Holy cow. I can't think of any other direction that I can. I'm actually reaching the end. Like it's yeah. my, There's my no wife problem. doesn't believe me, but it's yeah. like, where do I go? I yeah. don't really have anywhere else. I mean, if something else came out in the future. Yeah. But there's, there's nothing else that I would want. Like yeah, I'm it's kind trying of to get that all the well, all yeah. out of the way. And yeah, Brian says, will any triad speakers be at M wave? We'd love to have triad. Um, I don't cool. have contacts with them. Uh, so more than likely not unless they just happen to see our videos or 
I mean, we can, I'll be glad to reach out to them. I send out a lot of emails, make a lot of phone calls, but really every brand has to just decide, okay, is this a good fit for our brand, our marketing strategy, our budget is a big one. Um, cause what you guys have to realize is for a brand to be able to come to even M wave or any other event, they've got to ship product. They have to pull product out of inventory. They won't be able to sell that new. Um, they have personnel, so they've got staffing that has to fly out hotels. So there's a lot of logistics to make that happen. Um, and then just the actual, you know, the space if they want to exhibit, then there's a cost there. So it's definitely a, a pretty good undertaking. Now, M-Wave is super affordable. When you start looking at a lot of these other companies, a lot of other shows, especially comparing to Cedia, Cedia is astronomical. Mm -hmm. um, they charge a ton. So ours is definitely more affordable, but it's not a Cedia. We don't have 10,000 people coming. You know, ours is definitely more um, kind of not localized. What do you want? Because we got people coming internationally. Um, but it's definitely a smaller scale. So they've got to so figure like out, is, yeah, is that something that, that we want to invest in? Um, and we're, we're new. I mean, we're literally three years into this. So, but man, we'd love to have them. I'd love to have any brand out at Mway because again, they're going to be a fit for somebody, you know, whether it's a speaker manufacturer, cable manufacturer, projector, theater seats, there's no perfect anything. Um, so I'm all for it, man. I'd love to have them. Nicholas, Ryan, you get hi-fi head, hi-fi headphones on. No, these are Odd-Easy. I do carry hi-fi, man. There's Here's a hi-fi, man, right here. You got a lot of lot of headphones. I do. Uh, these are the Susfaras. Boyd says, or Michael. Sundara is not the Susfara. Boyd says, Michael, have you reviewed the SVS Ultra Towers? Absolutely. That was one of the first speakers I ever reviewed. So I reviewed the RF73s. Then after that, I, re I reached out to Eclipse. I'm sorry, to SVS. Asked them if they'd send me their subwoofer, the PB16. And Nick said, man, I'd love to send you our subwoofers. But since you're a Eclipse guy, we'd love to just get your honest feedback on what you think about our speakers. Can we send them to you? So they sent me the Ultra Towers. So yeah, I've got several videos on the Ultra Towers, the Ultra Sender. Uh, and then a ton of different subwoofers over the years. So check that out. Just search for it on YouTube. Uncle Touch, what should I buy, guys? Uh, we, we already answered that. Uh, PK Hemu says, Ryan, some of the brands mostly used by custom installers like Crix, Pro Audio Tech, Elemento. I haven't heard of that one. Elemento use subs which go only to 30 hertz but play to 130 dB. Why don't they have a sub to go um, basically down to 15 hertz? Good question. They're hard to make. The more expensive, <clears throat> take more power. So it's easier to get high output than low end extension. Mm -hmm. And they're harder to deal with. Mm. It's, I mean, a lot of people, you're putting them in these really expensive homes mm -hmm. and they don't really want to hear things rattling apart, which is a lot of the low frequencies will do. I don't. I mean, this is just me making assumptions here. I honestly don't know. But a lot of the subs you're talking about, too, are horn subs. You know, they're mm -hmm. like cricks. I mean, there's something more that you would see in a professional cinema than you will in a home theater environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ender, yes, uh, I do have that. That's on my list of many things to do. I've got a bunch of reviews to do. I do have Matthew Pose, his... Uh, home theater tour i've done it i just don't have it edited yet again if i could hire an editor the hard thing man honestly if i were to pay somebody to edit my videos it's literally it'd probably be it wouldn't even be a wash because a lot of the videos the actual videos um like the ad revenue that comes in from youtube is really pennies man so um, i'd pay way more in an editor to edit a video especially a home theater tour because they take I'll spend 12 hours easily editing. Um, that's not including the filming of it, but just the editing of it. So, but yeah, so it's coming. You got a super chat. Uh, do I just saw that one. Let me scroll down here. Pavel, good to see you, man. $4 or $5 super chat. Jonathan was so <laughs> insulted by Ryan's comment. He is gone, man. No, he, uh, we're no longer friends. <laughs> no, his daughter uh, is doing a, um, 
I think it was like a Christmas program. Like Christmas pageant or something. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, he said Amazon, family first. Hundred percent, man. Always take care of your family. Be there for them. Because what I'm learning, my kids are now. My youngest is 17. My oldest is 24. Um, guys, your kids come and go really quick. Ryan has young kids. And even in the past three years, I've watched your kids grow up so fast, man. And so they'll be moving out before you know it. So always, 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 man, you'll never regret, you know, as you get older, looking back at the time you spent with your family, I don't think you'll ever go, man, I wish I would have worked more. I wish I would have did more overtime. You're always going to look back and go, man, I wish I spent more time with yeah. my family because they come and go so quick. You man. do a really good job at going to as much of your kids stuff even now as you can. Oh yeah, we we have to. Like that's priority, you yeah. know. My kids come first. Um absolutely. Like all right, prime example. So do I have reviews to do? Yeah. Do I have a lot of work to do? Yeah. Could I sit here and work every single day all day long? Yes. Um my wife said, "Hey, I'm taking or we're taking Rebecca to look at colleges." And so just the other day, she's like, you can stay home. I know you got a bunch to do. And I said, no, nah, I want to be there for my daughter. You know, I want to be there as she looks at colleges, you know? And so, but yeah, I don't ever want to get to the end of my life, look back and go, man. And, and truthfully, I look at a lot of times from my childhood and I wish my dad would have did certain things with me. Uh, not that he's a bad dad, but there was times like he would make an excuse like, man, I'm tired because I've been working. Dad, can we go throw the ball? And he's like, I'm tired. Man, I, I don't ever want to do that. I want to be, I want my kids to go, dude, my dad was at every game that he could be. My dad supported me. He didn't like cheerleading. You think I like being a cheer dad? No, but we did nine years of cheer dad. And I love seeing my kids cheer my girls because that's what they're passionate about. When my son was playing basketball, man, I love being out there. I, I don't watch any sports. We're talking zero sports guys. But I love seeing my son play basketball, man. I'm his biggest, you know, cheerleader on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Now my son just got back from a gaming convention because he does TikTok content on gaming reviews. And he's having the time of his life out there. And I'm texting him and he's texting me. He's like, Dad, you'll never guess who I just met. I just met. And he sends me a picture of, I don't know this dude. He's like, this is the creator of The Last of Us, the game. He's like, I had a chance to have a long conversation with this guy. It was awesome. You know, he got to visit the uh, studio of Big Bang Theory and he loved Big Bang Theory, you know, so he's just getting some really cool opportunities. And so, um, yeah, anyway, that's my little, did I just go on a little soapbox? That's all good. I do that yeah. all the time. Family first, man. But yeah, family yeah, first. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Jonathan, he's exactly where he needs to be with his family. Away from this show. Yeah. Because I don't like him. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Nicholas, I get it, man. More people need to put down, and me included, put down my phone. Because think about it, I got hundreds of comments and emails and DMs. And you know what I mean? People like, hey, can I just get five minutes of your time to jump on a call to get you to help me figure this out? I'm like, no, I can't. You know? Um, but yeah, I'd love to. Da, 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 da. All right. Let's hit on my, wow, we still got 30. And we got 30 comments, man. We're already on two hours and three minutes. Yeah. Siphonics Audio, good to see you here, brother. Uh, he said, I'm glad M-Wave has systems to actually hear what Spatial offers, unlike 90% of other shows that only have two-channel systems. Boring. Um, he's totally right. Um, that was one of the main reasons why we created M-Wave is because here's the thing. I don't even think, I think it's way higher than 90%. I only know of one other show for the most part. Maybe Axpona has a couple. No. But if they have hundreds of two channel rooms and they have, even if they have six dedicated theater rooms, that's still vastly majority a two channel show. And so we're flipping the script. We want to be a home theater show primary and first and foremost. Are we going to do some other fun stuff? Hopefully this year, like a gaming setup. I would love to do that. Put an ultra short throw projector gaming setup dude. That would be awesome. Uh, so we're looking into doing some things like that. There's going to be some two channel there may be some headphones down the road, different things like that. But primarily we want to make sure that the heartbeat of M wave is, is a lot of home theater stuff for you. Cause we know that there's nothing out there like it. So yeah, we'd love to get you to come down from Canada, man. That'd be awesome. Uh, Jay travels building a home and wanted to connect all of my TVs to the same AV rack, 
My question is the long run, should I use HDMI cables or ethernet cable with, I'm not familiar with that, uh, but it's like a 4K HDMI over ethernet. So should he do a conversion? Because ethernet, we can do really, really, really long runs. Um, I mean, HDMI cables with, it, what's the max on an HDMI active fiber optic cable? Do you know? Thousand feet. Oh, wow. I didn't know they could go that long. It's I've got fiber. a 50 foot run. It's just light. You okay. can go as long as you have the power to light the element, you're fine. What, what I would do in this situation, if you're building a new house, mm -hmm. J Travels, is do Ethernet mm -hmm. and run conduit or smurf tube to every mm -hmm. single one of them that makes sense because what's going to happen is yeah. in a few years True. the spec is going to change and you're going to be screwed yeah because Ryan says you can't that. update yep. update with it it's going to mm -hmm. be stapled to the wall unless you put conduit and have them pre-run pull strings or a couple of them yeah. and that way you can run again through the conduit mm -hmm. when a new spec comes out otherwise you're just cornering yourself and you're not going to be able to keep up with it yeah i agree man i wish i would have done conduit because guess what i got two new hdmi cables because i wanted them to be the same and now i got to climb back up in the attic <laughs> conduit, in florida man. florida attics are hot and number two i have to literally take everything out of my daughter's closet to be able to get into the attic because the the attic entrance in the garage I don't know if it's like a firewall kind of thing, but basically there's a wall. You cannot get through it. So there's air ducts and everything. And then there's uh, plywood that goes horizontal. So you can't get beyond it. So I literally have to go through this whole process, man. It's a pain. So Hulk thing. Good to see you, man. Appreciate the $5 super chat. Hello, fellas. Just wanted to know what, or do you think that Integra receivers are still relevant? Great question. Because I never heard you guys mention Integra. Integra used to be real big. So did Onkyo. So Integra was kind of like the Lexus. You know how you got Toyota and Lexus. So Integra was always like the Lexus of um, Onkyo. And gosh, 17 years ago, that was kind of some of the big two that were, were definitely spoke of highly. And you heard a lot about, but you're right. We haven't really, we don't hear a lot about them. We don't hear a lot of guys saying, hey, I just bought the new Integra this. And I don't even hear Integra themselves kind of promoting themselves. Onkyo is just now coming back on the scene. Mm -hmm. They kind of dipped out for a long time. And so now they're like, I think when they came out, what, the RZ50 maybe? That's when they kind of mm -hmm. came back on the scene and were like, oh, what's this, man? They've got Direct Live. What's up with that? And so people got excited again. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't hear a whole lot of people. I don't know why. And I know this shouldn't have any bearing on it, but I've never liked the look of the Integras. They look so blocked. I think aesthetics on home theater it. gear has a bigger impact than people think it does. Yeah. It's, if don't you don't know. like how something looks, yeah. subconsciously, you're probably not going to buy it. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I'm just always just kind of like, uh, I don't know. But, but yeah, you're right. Well, I just don't hear a lot about Integra. But again, we see Onkyo kind of making a trend back onto the scene. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about them. I think the more competition, the better for us as Absolutely. consumers. Absolutely. Because it's going to help drive the other people to make a better product. Thus, they're going to have to make a better product. And I think consumers win at the end. Yes. So, but yeah, I'd love to see Integra um, kind of get more in the forefront. But uh, da -da -da, I got that one. MW says... In this case, why not just get the SM SG32? That's not the like Ascendo 32. Okay. Uh, you mean instead of the 50? So the 50 is very much part of a marketing strategy, right? Mm. Because it if people see that, it's very much a I want to experience it. So it's yeah. Guys, remember, this is my showroom, so it's yeah. it's very much partially a draw to get people in. Yeah, I could definitely do a couple 32s equal the output of that thing, yeah. but it's a 50. I mean, yeah. who's got that? I mean, very few people have a 32, but a 50 is like, what? I don't know of anybody else that has one deployed in a theater right now. I mean, I don't technically right now either, 
Mm -hmm. The only one that I know that's actively being used is in the Atlanta Home Theater showroom. Mm -hmm. Do they still have it? I didn't know if that was just a temporary. Still have right? it. Okay. it is temporary, but I think they still have it. Okay. All right. Uh, da -da -da. I'll check that one. Nicholas, this question, does the general... Okay, does the general plus 10 dB house curve stay flat below 20 hertz down, or does it need to keep climbing the lower you go? Plus 15 dB at 10 hertz, for example, on a 20 dB at 1 hertz. As we proceed, oh, okay, I see what he's saying. Um, Theoretically, it should keep climbing. It should look like... Yeah, it's hard to do yeah. opposite, yeah. Right, it should look like this as it go approaches zero because we hear lower frequencies differently than we hear high. So the lower we go, the more incremental boost you need for us to perceive them as the same level. Mm -hmm. What that is, I couldn't tell you, and it's probably going to be a subjective answer, but theoretically, you'd want it to climb slightly. Mm -hmm. You'd want it to be at a slight angle. Siphonics Audio, Martin Logan, are top clarity different? The, uh, I think this I think question probably... was when we were doing the F200s. Yeah, I think so. I don't know that they're any clearer. I think the increase in high frequency, like the boost, mm -hmm. maybe subjectively increases a, a <coughs> thinking of more clarity, right? Mm -hmm. Because we per a, we perceive a higher SPL, especially in high frequencies, as being clearer. Mm -hmm. And I think that may be, may be part of it. Makes sense. Ryan, what are your thoughts on ultra short throw projection? I think if it checks all the boxes, do it. But with 100-inch TVs and stuff now, that's tough. Yeah. I think a TV almost always is going to win, though a lot of the cheaper TVs I think kind of suck. Mm -hmm. But you got to see them. Yeah. I think TVs are going to I think there's an boxes, application so. for them, for sure. Um, so like Ryan says, you're... Now, I mean, recently Hisense came out with a hundred inch TV for three thousand dollars, and I, one of my patrons bought one, and he loves it. That's kind of hard, you know. Before it was okay, yeah, you've got a seventy five inch, um, you know, OLED mm -hmm. or seventy seven or whatever it is, and but you can get a hundred inch or even a hundred and twenty inch in an ultra short throw. It's like that's a much more immersive experience, and I know for me. I much prefer when watching movies to have an immersive experience, even if there's not quite the black levels, even if there's not quite the contrast levels. It's just, I love that immersiveness. But like Ryan's saying, now that we've got 100 inch TVs that are just as much as an ultra short, though, it's getting harder, you know, mm -hmm. to make that decision. And I mm -hmm. think as technology changes, um, we're going to see more and more TVs that are 100 inch, 120 inch that are affordable. So it's going to make yeah. that more difficult. Now, when you get big, I still, because everybody's saying, oh, what about micro LED? You know, the ones where they can just build it as big as you want it. To me, those have some serious challenges to overcome. Yeah. There's the a heat, lot of heat. Exactly. The installation of it. I mean, you're going to have to hire somebody professionally. Um, what happens when the technology changes in five years? You I stuck. Mean, you're just going to throw it away. I mean, that's a lot of investment. It's super expensive. There's, there's a bunch of different, you know, where do you do with the center channel kind of thing? So I'm still a fan of like regular, um, projection for a mm -hmm. big screen. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I think ultra short those have their place. Tarhoya, I'll come to you. I just saw it come in. Mike says, Hey guys have the, have you had the chance to audition any of the golden? Oh, we did that. We did that one. Yep. Perfect. I'll undo that one. Let me scroll down here. Tahoe, appreciate the $5 super chat. The 100 U8K is getting calibrated. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, baby. On Tuesday. Excited to see how it looks after getting it dialed in. We'll have to update y'all next week. Super, super cool, man. It's going to be a big difference. I love it. Like I said, man, that... that it's not the best TV in the world, I'm sure, but I saw it at CD and I was like, I'm looking at this image going, dang, like this thing looks really nice. And we got all kinds of crazy lighting. I mean, you're in a almost like a big warehouse 
with those um, probably fluorescent lights overhead. Mm -hmm. It's still gorgeous, man. So I'm excited for you. Scroll back up here. Joshy. I'm owning Arndall 1723s. I'd like to go with Buckeye amps. Which amplifier would you suggest? What do you think, Ryan? If you don't listen very loud, the Hypex 252 is probably fine. If you listen loudly, <clears throat> the 252 is probably still fine. Okay. If you're interested in one, Ryan can get you pricing on that. I mean, Purify technically is better, but do you need it? The noise floors on those speakers is going to be mm. lower than the Purify, so there's no sense. Okay. Kevin says, does anyone look forward to ending the home theater journey? No. It doesn't I end. I mean, all right, so here's the reality. The things that I was enjoying in high school i might not necessarily enjoy now as an adult prime example car audio i still like a good car audio system but i don't have you know dual 12s in my system i don't have amplifiers and things like that i'm not running components separates so there may come a point in my life that maybe i'm no longer interested in home theater i mean i might be in my 60s going man i'm gonna start taking up golfing could happen but I don't, I'm not looking for, I'm not even chasing an end, if that makes sense. Like, and that's why I try to tell you guys, just enjoy the journey, man. It's, it's changing. It's continually changing, but I'm not chasing anything. I think sometimes when we get caught up in trying to chase the next latest, greatest, mm -hmm. you just end up not enjoying it. You know, because you're always trying to like, oh man, I need to get that. Or you got that FOMO. You want this or should I buy that? I just enjoy the journey. And if the right deal comes along, you know, back when I, I was buying used equipment, I mean, if I saw, I wasn't looking for a better subwoofer, but if I happened to see a better one on Craigslist or, or eBay or whatever, and it was better than mine and I could get a good deal on it and then I could sell mine and I could swap it out for like next to nothing or mm -hmm. sometimes I even make money doing it. I'm like, yeah. So I'm not like looking for something, but I don't think my journey is really ever over and technology is going to change. So it's technology change. I never thought I'd be doing Atmos. I thought they were gimmicky when I first you know, heard about it. I'm like, man, who's putting, you know, speakers on your ceiling. That was the dumbest thing I ever heard. I love it. You know? Yeah. I know how that goes. Another thing that I think a lot of people don't think about is the, if you enjoy the journey and you focus on the journey instead of doing the keeping up with the Joneses, yeah. you have a tendency to try and do more with what you have, which also enhances your knowledge as you go along, which sure. means when you do inevitably make an upgrade, mm -hmm. the knowledge that you have gleaned from those experiences now can allow you to make a better decision going forward. So if you're constantly just making decisions going forward, <clears throat> the odds that you're going to make a poor decision increase exponentially but if you're making slow decisions and then trying to learn and deal with what you have as you go forward go through it you're probably going to make a better decision when the time comes to actually do it because you're spending time getting to know things learning things to better utilize what you have instead of just allowing the technology to do it for you mm -hmm. love it mark wesson says have you had a chance to do a serious audition of the Paradigm XR13 subwoofer? The motor drive is massive for the speaker cone. I don't know the model numbers, but I had a chance to um, hear several Paradigm at Cedia. Really, really nice subwoofers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I don't know if it was the XR. I don't know their model numbers that much. I think they're really good, but an 18, a good 18 is still going to wipe the floor with them. You need the surface area. Mm. And if you don't have it, you have to compensate for that using excursion. And then you can create other problems from excursion. So I think a, the bigger the driver, 18 is the sweet spot. The bigger mm. you can go, potentially the better the outcome. There's some cons that you can happen as you increase in the higher frequencies. But I I don't think the paradigm is going to be able to, to keep up with the a good quality 18. Yeah. Um, 
Man, I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce that. Dinesd, maybe? Dines? Uh, the BenQ. Man, my vision is crazy. Is that TK? TK yeah. Okay. I didn't tell if there was an I in there. TK700 doesn't come with motion frame interpolation. How can I get, or maybe, what player has that? Is there a 4K player that offers that? I mean, I know we know Mad VR does, but that's probably not what you're going to pair maybe with. The, maybe an HD Fury. Okay. Interesting. They might do that. A certain okay. model would be my guess. Uh, that would probably the direct be the direction that I would look into. Okay. Look at an did HD the, Fury. Did the Panasonic players, did they offer motion interpolation? No, I've never looked for it, so I don't I couldn't tell you in all honesty. Let us know in the chat if you know the answer to that, guys. I don't know. Uh Wise Bonez says, Does Dirac always adjust the base levels extremely low? First time using Dirac with the Ankyo RZ50 and two clips RP sixteen or fourteen hundred SW subs. Yes. Your typical house Odyssey, target Odyssey curve is going to be thing. flat. Yeah, Odyssey does the same thing. And I'm like, and you don't want flat. This is anemic. Like, I hate it. I always go five to six decibels higher after calibration on my subs. It, it could Every have time. also gotten your time delays and phasing wrong because room EQ is not perfect. I can sure. promise you that every time you run room EQ, mm -hmm. every time, even if it's the exact same experience or the mm -hmm. exact same mic locations, exact same equipment, everything, it's going to be different. Cue it a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different. For oh, sure. Hey, guys, if you're having fun, smash the like button for me. How about that? I never say that, but I thought I would. Tito Rodriguez, I don't think this has been asked, but what is Ryan's plan on acoustics for the new theater? You've mentioned not, that two weeks ago. I'm not going to do anything. It's just going to be concrete walls, and that's going to be it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Hope and a prayer. Ping pong uh, ball. <laughs> so the Officina Acoustica stuff is uh, the fine. acoustics. Mm -hmm. The whole room that is being built. So if you look behind me, all of the black panels that are in that room are absorption and diffusion to different levels. Every panel is different depending on the location. So we're doing mm -hmm. that. And then behind that is double layers of three quarter inch osb with a sandwich of green glue on um pat channel attached to wrist clips attached to mm -hmm. traditional timber studs with r13 in the stud base and then on the ceiling it's r38 with r13 behind it so there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this room um it's i guess a room within a room and then the back wall that one back there Behind that sub is going to be another, I don't know the exact depth, but like six to eight feet of baffle wall that we're going to build out. And then the front wall, the screen wall is actually six feet deep where the subs and the black swans are going to be. And we're yet to determine what we're going to do up front with um, uh, insulation. We're going to build something for the subs, but we don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I was I mentioned that in my post today that this thing's yeah. gonna be good place to ride out a storm because mm. nothing's gonna happen. But if the OSB falls from the ceiling, it might kill you. I bet if you aim the 50 at the tornado, it would go Major the other direction. Around. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I ain't competing with that, man. That is maybe insane. I love it. That's funny, dude. Um uh, um, no, Pavel, the eight foot baffle wall is not a giant room filled with rock wool. It's actually going to have some designed acoustic treatments for low frequency because theoretically we could just do a huge baffle, but then you're potentially attenuating frequencies that you don't want to, like your higher frequencies. So this one's going to be specifically designed to mm -hmm. capture the low stuff. And then the room itself, like mm -hmm. all of this stuff, is what we're using for the higher frequencies yeah and you've you've heard them before at like cd oh yeah is yeah. there any other place uh Here. no okay but the yeah, they, oh, big reason that, that i went with them is cedia it's modular mm -hmm. um it's easy to install mm -hmm. michael mentioned this earlier that if we ever moved we could potentially take it with us and it wouldn't have to be the exact same room i could build onto this or make it smaller it's you have a tremendous amount of flexibility. I, mm -hmm. I look at it very much like Kaleidoscape. Mm -hmm. It's you got to pay to play, but once you're in, it really makes a lot of sense. 
Um, and it makes a great Chris gift the youth man one day, like when yes. he goes bigger, he can just send that to me. That'll be my studio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris Contreras says, Ryan, do you have a brick and mortar audio store or just sales? So no, I mean, my home is my store. So if anybody wants to demo things, they can come and I can set things up. I typically will do, if we schedule it ahead of time, um, if you're interested in speakers, I'll do blind or sighted speaker comparisons, sub comparisons, whatever you want. So it's a very intimate experience. It's by appointment only. There's no showroom right now because obviously it's in pieces. <laughs> it's all tore but no, I just operate out of my house. I don't really see the point in doing a showroom, like a physical brick and mortar location. Uh, there's a lot of issues with that. I feel like you, I could build a theater like this in a brick and mortar location, but you know, I'm selfish. I want to be able to utilize it too. Yeah. So why not have it in my home? And then I also don't have to pay for rent, which is nice. True. Yeah, I guess. They, I mean, sadly, a lot of those brick and mortar stores have just, they've closed up. And mm -hmm. so trying to keep that overhead as minimal as possible is probably a good thing. It is open uh, to anybody. If you want to make a trip though, just got to yeah. get it planned, pick you up from the airport. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen guys fly out from out of state. You know, they're like, hey, I want to come see that. I remember when you first got the NZ9, we were at, I don't know if it, it was, was M Wave. The, was it M Wave the first yes. year? Yes. Yeah, we had a guy like the last day or whatever I was there. He flew in from out of state. He wanted to see the NZ9 because that was a new project. Yeah, because they had just came out with it. And he wanted to see, man, is this what I want to put in my theater room? So Michael could be mistaken for an Italian mafia gangster. I doubt that, Nicholas. Doubt I can't see that. Yeah, I'm too nice, man. I'm like, sir, can you please put that gun down? <laughs> I don't see it happening. Pavel, appreciate the $10 super chat. Can we get a ballpark figure? Uh-oh. On an officina acoustical room like yours might run a retail punter. What does that mean? Like, I guess like, because I, I saw somebody ask this question. So if somebody wanted to hire officina acoustica, to build out a room because that's the room itself, the acoustic mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. Are we talking like, like just regular retail? Are we like 20,000? Are we in the thirties? Are we forties? Are we less than that? More than that? So 50 or 60 could be a hundred or more. It depends on the room and it depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. So they have, they have different levels, right? They have two levels of rooms. They have their basic and they have the reference. Mm -hmm. The reference, which is what this room is going to be, is every panel is different. It's designed for the space. Uh, interesting. The normal one is not done that way. Mm -hmm. um, the big one, you get renders, you get a bunch of other stuff. Like all the lighting comes with this. I mean, it's it is really a drop in room. Like the lighting design's done. The all the panels and stuff are done. The only thing I have to worry about is the infrastructure. So mm -hmm. like the OSB where I'm mounting it to and the mm -hmm. floor. And electricity getting to and, the components. yeah, like the electricity and getting to the, the <clears throat> components, but that's it. Uh, nice. Pricing, it's really going to depend on the size of the space and what you're trying to accomplish. I yeah. will say that, that it's like a little rough idea, though, for sure. Um, for a room my size, if you were doing like the basic one, and this doesn't include like the baffles and stuff in the back because I'm doing all of those. It's probably 50 plus retail. Maybe. You're probably like 80 ish. Okay. And then okay. reference, you're going to be over a hundred, over a hundred. Okay. But that's like me coming out, doing the install. Like that's including all of that. So mm. I'm trying, it's, I try and be as, as inclusive as possible. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. But if you think about like what you would have to do in the amount of labor that you have to do to design a room to this level. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot to go through that yeah there's markup but it's you're paying for the install and the expertise to make it happen and get it done and get it done right the first time <clears throat> there's something i saw uh it was right up here oh, okay here we go tito says uh ryan other than m-wave can we purchase a ticket to see this theater during the year how would that go it's like you if somebody just, wanted to come come see your theater, what what is no, that? No, you just like? come see it. So reach out to him. I'll host you. I get an extra bedroom. You don't have to stay with me, but I just love sharing the space. It's partly why you're designing it. 
That is why. Yeah. You, you big reason you why. Up dealers, whoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's his competition if you think of it that way. But don't care. Like, I don't care. Just come on. Don't care. If, if vendors want to come. Transparency and trustworthiness, I think, are the most important things in these types of relationships. If you don't do that, where are you going to go? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna to try to knock through these. So we're not gonna star anymore because we still got 18. Uh, no, nothing says I have some Dolby Atmos upfiring modules. Could I use those for on wall Atmos speakers? Great question. Or should I buy a specific on wall Atmos speaker? Um, depends on which ones they are, but a lot of them are meant and designed to either be an upfiring, like prime example, the um, Klipsch RP 500. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There may be another letter after that, but those are those can be up firing. Those can be on wall. And then there's a switch on the back that you change it from. If you're doing up firing, you change it to Atmos. If you're doing on wall, like your height speakers, then you would change that to surround. So mm -hmm. a lot of them do have that ability. I think the SVS uh, prime elevation, I know they can be most people are using those on wall. I'm guessing you probably could do those up firing as well. That would be my guess. So just yeah. make sure they're placed correctly for the driver's angle. A lot of them have angled drivers to facilitate yeah. the up firing and hitting the ceiling and then coming down onto the. Yeah. Make bushing. sure you got flat ceilings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if they're kind of vaulted, then it, it's not going to work. There's definitely some challenges doing up firing, but I think they can be effective, especially if you can't um, install on ceiling or in ceiling speakers. Nicholas says, question, can you guys elaborate on wide dispersion versus narrow dispersion characteristics and the pros and cons for home theater, please? Great question. You waiting for me to answer that one? I mean, I'm, I know what it is. I don't know if I've got a great answer. I mean, wide dispersion is kind of the angle at which the speaker disperses sound. Some manufacturers have a pretty wide, like what, 30 degrees or so. That's and narrow. So, that's narrow. What would be a wide, like 65? 80. 90 120 okay. jonathan's oh. are like 140. yeah his, his are huge so yeah so it can either be really wide so my understanding the wider it is the more it's going to be interacting with your room the narrower yeah. that dispersion it's going to be some companies call it controlled directivity so they're trying to control the dispersion and kind of angle that and fire that at a specific location mm -hmm. um so but what's your understanding of that like, how does that? There's pros and cons to both of them. So wider dispersion, better seat to see consistency, more boundary interaction, more interaction with the room, mm -hmm. narrower, <clears throat> less seat, seat to seat consistency, less interaction with the room. Mm -hmm. Narrow to the point of my Martin Logan's, it's bad enough that if you move your head, mm -hmm. the sound changes. Yeah. So it's always a give and take. You've just got to find what pros and cons will work for your space and then design accordingly. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Um, Ryan was most... mainly concerned about his one seat. Mm -hmm. So he didn't care that it was very, very like targeted mm -hmm. dispersion. Yep. Design within the parameters of your theater and then get the equipment that ticks those boxes. You answered this one with Chris yep. already. Berserker, what do you guys think of the Kef R3 Meta bookshelf speakers for a living room? And would I lose a bit of fullness if I were to use the R8 Metas for my rear surround against the back wall? I've had limited experience with Kef, so I'm probably not the best one to answer that. I've only heard like the, man, I forget the model. Oh, the blades, Kef blades. I've heard those. I've heard a few Kefs um, over the years, but. Uh, I don't think I've heard the threes or the or the mm -hmm. R8s. What do you guys think of the Cat 3 Meta bookshelf? The R8s are the towers, correct? Let me look it up. I'm pretty sure they are. Kef R8. I don't have any experience with the Metas. I've heard very good things about the Metas. Um, so these Kef are up, these are up firing. What are Kef R8 Metas are front up firing? They're like what? Atmos speakers. Yep. That's what I'm showing. Let me pull it up here. Oh, I see. So he's talking about using the R3s. So like that. And would I lose a bit of fullness if I were to use? Oh, okay. So he's 
asking about the R8s versus the R3s. Um, so these are going to be bookshelf speakers. Let's look at the specs. Let's take a look see. Be, I love the way Kef looks. They man. do look really good. Those Uniq drivers are white. So it you got a one good. inch, uh, one inch tom tweeter, five so, inch mid range driver, six and a half hybrid. Let's see, do, 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 do. So that's a co concentric design. So you got the tweeter inside the mid range driver, and mm. then you got a base driver down here. Kef R3 meta. And I'll pull up the details for these. So what do you want to know? 87 dB sensitivity. Mm. 58. That's the R3 or the R8? This is the R that's the bookshelves. The oh, this is this is something that I was looking at earlier because some I, somebody mentioned something about the blades. So mm -hmm. we'll get to that question because it's highlighted somewhere. Yeah. But I was looking at the blade specs. Mm -hmm. And one thing jumped out at me with how mm -hmm. where did that go? Do they say this on this speaker? Maximum SPL. Yeah, they do. Okay. So this jumped out at me with these speakers where Kef says maximum output. Mm -hmm. They don't give you a like a a drop off. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget the technical term for it, but we're like you're minus six at X right. frequency response sure. or frequency. They don't give you that. They just say a maximum output. And this is something that I was looking at the spinoramas for the ascendos. And this, I'm not throwing, I don't mean to throw bringing ascendo into this. Right. Um, they're just kind of, I think, guilty of this. Is I think a lot of manufacturers are guilty of this, where they'll sell maximum output. Mm. The problem with saying that, and I'm making an assumption on this because I don't have their spinorama for this, is that the 110 does not mean that it's flat at 110. All that means is the maximum SPL output that they mm. achieve at any frequency is 110. So that's almost like giving a peak rating on an yes. amplifier. Hmm. So what happened when I looked at, and kudos to Ascendo for, I saw this on the Spinorama, right? So they set a max output and then they gave me the Spinorama that I could correlate to it. So it was flat up to... I don't know what it was, 110, somewhere in there. And then it started to fall off. So at your crossover region, you could have had like 125 way up here. And this is for like the, the five or something, the really small driver. And then it came down to like 90 something at, and I don't, guys, I don't remember what it was, but mm -hmm. at like 100 or 90 hertz, right? So that, I thought it was going to be flat when I was looking at it initially, but it was simply stating the maximum SPL that they're getting at any frequency. So I just want people to be aware of that. Yeah, this says 110, and I'm looking at the, what am I looking at? The R3 meta, but that is potentially the maximum SPL at a higher frequency. That's just what it's hitting, and it's going to drop off substantially as you near, near your crossover region. Mm -hmm. And at an 87 dB sensitivity, you're starting to get into a region that you may not get as high as you want. But if you're not looking for a ton of output, it may work fine for you. I just want you to be aware of that. Is that something that the Uniq, Uniq drivers usually struggle with is high amounts of output? Like when I was looking at the blades, I saw, oh, the blades are like 122 dB of maximum S XPL. Then I'm thinking, wait, they don't give me a frequency range for that. They don't give me a minus number for that. All it says is 122. Where is that? So just something to maybe check if you can. But in the question of R8 versus R3, what are your fronts? Berserker, if you're still here. I typically would recommend trying to get surrounds, even though it's more expensive, mm -hmm. that are like capable with mm -hmm. your LCRs. Because if they're not, and I saw somebody just perusing, it was just, I'm a, I follow the home theater subreddit. Sometimes mm -hmm. that can be a dumpster fire. 
but somebody was recommending, oh, you can get really capable LCRs and then you can run your crossover for your surrounds and your tops at like 120 to 140. I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> because what will end up happening is if you're listening at loud volumes and you get to something that is around your crossover region, if something's moving around the room, you could potentially hear it LCR, LCR, LCR subwoofer yeah, as it hits so your and goes to your surrounds of your tops. And it can be really jarring. Um, the other problem with getting into those frequency ranges is of like 120 plus is you're starting to get into like really, really deep male vocals. And if you encroach on that and there's are in your surround for some reason, they can get sent to your subs and it can unlocalize everything. It could be really weird. So again, things to consider. Um, I do recommend, and this is one reason why I think Jonathan's theater is so amazing is because it's the same speaker everywhere. Yeah. And it is very immersive when you do that because there's no transition. It's the mm. exact same everywhere, which is super <coughs> cool. So in this question, sorry, I would say R3 meta given the two choices. What is the R8 capability here? Specs. 106. He said there were going to be R3 metas for left and right and R6 for the center. I just don't have a lot of space between the couch and my back wall, so that's why I was looking at the R8 meta as the rear speakers. I mean, if you don't have... Do you listen loudly, Berserker? If you don't listen loudly, potentially you could get away with the R8. The only concern that I have, well, one concern I have, not the only, one concern I have is your crossover potentially changing uh, because they say the frequency range for the R8 is 88 kilohertz at minus six, supposedly, and then the R3 is 38 which is substantially different. Did you answer that? No, not this one. No. Did you finish with your thought? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. The only reason I'm saying is I was, I was answering some chats over here, some questions. Jeremiah says, uh, will any home theater AVR be able to play the subwoofers low frequency, say around 15 to 18 hertz? I'm not sure what the question is here. Your AVR is going to send out the signal, like the whole LFE signal, to your subwoofer. And typically, most subwoofers have a amplifier in it. It's an active subwoofer. And so that subwoofer is going to play whatever frequencies it's capable of. There's not a ton of subwoofers that can play down to 15 hertz. Um, some of the SVS, they'll play down to like, uh, I mean, they'll play 15 hertz, but they'll be down several dB. Uh, I think my, when I had the um, I had dual PB16, I have to go back and look at my measurements, but I know they would play down to like 17 hertz, um, maybe 16. So it's going to be determined on the actual subwoofer, what it's capable. It's not really the AVR. The AVR is sending it the full signal, and then the subwoofer is figuring out, okay, can I play down that low? So I think that if that answers the question, does that yep. make sense? Okay. Yep. Make sure I understood that correctly. Just saw two super chats come in. Pavel, what is going on, man? Appreciate the love and support, brother. Five dollar super chat. Michael, are your RS2s in game? Would you consider a third? Great question. So yes, the RS2s in my uh, home theater, I don't see me going anywhere else. Like Ryan was talking about earlier with his Ascendos, I don't. I mean, could I go with a fifty inch? Yeah, I don't need a fifty inch. The RS2s have more output than I can utilize in my room. I can get flat down to five hertz. So I'm getting plenty low enough in my room. And so, yes, I don't need any more output. So they're in game for me for sure. The only reason why I would consider a third, and actually I can't, I don't, I just don't have the, the space. My behind my screen is fully, you know, I mean, unless I mounted this Joker to the ceiling somewhere, which I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> I don't have any floor space, not in this current home. But the only reason why I would add another subwoofer, and I probably wouldn't even go with an RS2, I'd go with the RS1, is just for better seat to seat consistency if I was concerned about that. Um, just being able to flatten out my frequency response even more, 
better seat to seat so that this person is experiencing the same amount of bass at all frequencies that I am in my primary listening position, but I don't need a third one. Um, but yeah, good question. Uh, Eric, appreciate the $10 super chat. He says, uh, thanks for spending the evening with us. Always a Sunday highlight for me. Thanks brother. I appreciate that, man. Would love spatial audio to continue improving as simple as simply awesome. If done right. Uh, P.S. App is it P.S. Apple? What's he saying there? P.S. PS Apple has a okay. spatial listing search. They do. It's sometimes it's just hard to differentiate when you're looking for stuff, and it, it. I don't know. It so could be done better. Not tagged well, maybe. I don't know. I could. It, maybe it is, and I'm just blowing smoke. Who knows? I think they. I think Jonathan was showing me they have like a spatial audio. I don't know if you call it a playlist in Apple. They do. I just wish it was easier to find good music. A lot of it sucks. Yeah. But man, I appreciate the love and support, Eric. I'm glad you guys are enjoying hanging out. Um, I love this, man. I love hanging out with y'all. I love helping you out. And I love hearing your stories, man. I truly do. Golf Addict, appreciate the $10 uh, Canadian Super Chat. Uh, looking to do a 2.1 setup for my TV, moving away from a soundbar. Cool. I think that's great. SVS Prime Wireless Pro Speakers. Edifier R2850 to 2850 dBs. Not familiar with that. Uh, with sub, Edifier's S3000 Pros. No sub. Okay, so these are different configurations, mm -hmm. I think is what he's asking, right? So he's saying SVS Prime Wireless Pro Speakers. Or he could go with the Edifier's with a sub. He could go with another Edifier model with no sub. Um, I'm a big fan of a subwoofer. So if you're doing it for your TV, so I'm assuming you're going to be doing some movies. So I would cross out anything without a sub, me personally. Um, clips the sevens with a sub. I've heard great things about the sevens. I've got the fives right in front of me. Um, great sounding speakers. They're active. Uh, so you could do the nines or the sevens with a sub. Um, man, again, this is one of those SVS sounds a lot different than clips. Um, Edifier, I haven't heard any of their speakers. I've, I've got actually some, uh, so oh, they're on the floor back here. I've got three Edifier headphones that I'll be doing a review, but I haven't heard their speakers as far as, um, man, but I, I'm, like I said, I'm a fan of doing one with a subwoofer. I mean, these have good bass, but they can't handle, I mean, they can't, they can't replicate what a subwoofer can do for you, especially in a home theater setup. So, Ryan, what are your thoughts? I wish I'd, I was familiar with the Edifier speakers. With um, that, I would probably go with the SVS Primes. You like those? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, again, I'm a. I like what I'm hearing from the fives. I really, really like them. So my vote would be the sevens or the nines. But I don't have any experience with those. So take yeah. that for what it is. It's just a bigger, um, bigger version than these. I think these have six and a half. The sevens have a, correct me if I'm wrong. No, these are five and a quarter. So that would be like probably a six and a half. And I think the nines have an eight inch driver. So, yeah, because I think he's saying the sevens with a sub or the, maybe the nines without a sub. I would go with the sevens with a sub over the nines without a yeah, sub. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good value, mm -hmm. the nines with a sub. Yep. You mean the sevens with a sub? The sevens with a sub. Yep. I think so. I Again, I haven't heard them, but I imagine they're going to be pretty similar to what I'm hearing from the. Mm -hmm. the you got five. two more super chats. Man, you guys are rolling them in. Um, check that one. Nicholas, appreciate the two dollar super sticker. Um, just let me know if there is a question. If not, um, definitely appreciate the love and support, man. Oh, here it is down here. Nope. Nope. He just did another super sticker. Appreciate it, brother. You're the man. Showing the love. Love it, dude. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, music doesn't typically dig down below 20 hertz, but if you're it watching, can. If you're watching movies, absolutely. There are some music tracks that do. Well, even orchestral music, like mm -hmm. pipe organs and stuff. It's not really orchestral, but pipe organs can go way low. So it depends on what type of music. Probably electronic yeah. music. I encourage play. people to be very careful about saying music doesn't go low because there's more than you think that does. I bet a uh, dead mouse. Has some super low stuff. Hmm. 
Claude says those SVS primes are amazing. I heard them at M wave and the whole room was impressed. See? So, I mean, everybody's going to hear differently um, and they're just going to have a different sound. But again, I've always liked the sound of clips. It's a horn. SVS are not a horn. So <clears throat> again, take that for what it's worth. That's why I never try to tell you what you should buy. You know, I mean, I can give you my opinion of what I like, but if at all possible, listen to them for yourself. All right. Yep. Um, can we use, all right, Nicholas says, can we use auto then incorporate some manual measurements perfected? Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. You can go back in there. Can you add EQ? It, if depends, you want to it depends on the platform. <clears throat> the Most of the time you want to EQ first. But for things like uh, your Denon and Morantz, you're really not going to be able to do that. You're just kind of. What about stuck. their um, the three hundred dollar one? The Pro app? Because didn't you? Get a uh, chance to not really. Okay. No, you have a lot more control over like the the house curve and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But you're not able to add independent EQ yeah. or anything like that. So. Some platforms you can, some you can't, but I would recommend that you do it before and then not go back and change what the Rumi Cube did. Yeah. Afterwards. Okay. God, appreciate that, man. Nicholas, appreciate that. Uh, so he was saying level matching. Yeah, you can go back and level match. I always recommend that because I can, I literally, when I um, set up the Arndall 1723s, um, I went in there and they were way off quite a bit like six db off so definitely i would always recommend going back and, and level matching um, all right a couple <laughs> i like a couple more i haven't been starring i know man they just take a while paul says i have a jtr 210 rm for my center channel what would be a better next step jtr 210 rt um to replace my clips course left and right or four J. Okay. So a lot of different options here. RTs. No the one tens would smoke your elevations for sure. Yeah. But he's asking which to do the RTs mm -hmm. or the one tens at this point. RTs. You're going to get more value out of your left and oh, right. I, than from the top. I, see what, I see what you're saying. Next step. Yeah. Replace the clips towers. Yeah, the course is, I mean, they're, that's from their um, the Heritage series. I had, I think I had a pair of course twos over the years. They're nice speakers for sure, but they're going to sound quite a bit different than the JTRs. JTRs are just on a, I mean, I loved my La Scala's, but once I heard the JTRs, I'm like, yeah, these got to go. Uh, let's see, got a couple more. Uh, uh, yep, got that one earlier. Cool. Dionysus Live says, hey guys, love the show. Appreciate it, man. I recently listened to the Keflade Meta at my local dealer. Had great bass and enveloping sound reaching you at all at once. Have you heard them and what are your thoughts? So I did hear the Blades at Audio Advice Live, but they were in a horrific like area. hallway. What's that? They're in a horrific area. Yeah, I mean, it's not kind of like a hallway, so I, I wouldn't want to bass like my total opinion. They were loud. I mean, they just had, they just got a have them cranking while people are walking by. I think it was more just to draw attention to them, but I'd like to see them in a dedicated room. So I think the, heard? the blades are great. I just don't really like Kef if you're going to play loud. Mm. Chuck says, can I, should I use a U mic one instead of the supplied mic from Denon? You can't. Mm. Yeah, you're not going to plug it into the Denon. Now you can use unless you're doing Dirac. Then you can. Can you use a U mic one with a Dirac? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm still not super familiar with Dirac. I need to get more Dirac stuff in. Oh sure. Uh Michael says, with all these insane high price subs that's out there, why don't they make subs with auto correction? So that it has a sensor or mic, so you put it on auto and it corrects itself to sound best. There are some. Um, there's an older clip sub, the RT series, RT12D. I've owned one of those. I had two of the RT10Ds. Those had 
I literally just found out this this past week, maybe two weeks ago, a guy said, hey, Michael, I know you own the 12D at one point. Any chance you still have the software? I'm like, what software? But it has some auto EQ. Um, SVS has the their stuff. Well, but it's not auto EQ. What he's no. saying is like you hook a mic up to the sub and it'll do it on its own. I've seen only a few subwoofers. I can't even remember what subwoofer. Martin Logan's have ARC. Yeah, that's right. So but some, I think maybe what some, Michael is talking about is it does it on its own all the time. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I just get the impression he's, why don't they make subs with auto correction so that it has a sensor of mic? Perlison does, ARC does. Martin mm -hmm. Logan does. Yeah. <clears throat> so some of them do. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, what power amp does the Cinder run? Okay, we did that one. Happy Sunday, gents. Appreciate it, Aaron. Thanks, Ryan, for spending so much time chatting with me. So you had a long conversation with him. Super You're cool. welcome. Appreciate the love and support. Claude, what's up, man? Claude, I'm excited, brother. We're coming to see you soon. We are. We're going to take a ski trip out there. Claude was one of our VIPs last year. Uh, had a great time hanging out with Claude. He's just such a kind gentleman. He really, really is. He doesn't know what he's getting himself into. Yeah, dude, we're going to trash your house. No, we're not. No, but we're going to come out there and have a great time skiing. He doesn't summer. know I'm bringing my dogs. Oh, you better not, dude. <laughs> you will not get an invitation next year. Uh, he says, Ryan, why don't you do 32-inch subs now? Right well, oh, I do right I. On 32 inch subs. Uh, hey, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's funny, dude. But we're bu I'm building the rooms so that you can decide for yourself. Is it he's still building his room out? I think he hasn't even started yet. Okay. But so he's he's building it out. He's designing. It won't be I don't know if they've much. broken ground on the house. So we'll have not. to we'll have to make a trip next year. Come and yeah. see it. Do a home theater yeah. tour while we're there. Hey, then that could be a tax write off. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no maybe i'm getting tired uh mm. fred uh ryan okay are you going to do an unboxing on the 15th sub I'm, I'm not sure it's a crate right it is a crate yeah so it'll be crated yeah. what are you going to see you open the crate and there's the 50 unscrews i mean i i've already seen it so it's it's like i know what to expect mm -hmm. i think it'll be cooler to have michael out for a first impressions of the space i think it'd be more interesting videotaping the guys bring that joker down the stairs yeah that's true that micro tease how do i get the best picture quality when streaming live sports sometimes the quality is a bit pixelated that's any fast internet for one that's thing. how it is man sometimes it sucks yeah i use a fire stick 4k max roku tv and the built-in apps I have a sony x950h sometimes it sucks yeah i don't think there's a best way for streaming right now there's not Hopefully over time it'll continue to get better. One Vet day. <laughs> Vet sweet Nas. Uh, what's the largest OLED? I'm not 97. familiar with OLEDs. 97? 97. Okay. LG. It is amazing. Mm. What does it run? Six grand? More? No. MSRP right now is 25. Oh, way off. I don't know why I was thinking six. I guess because the highest it has one for three. I'm like, I'll double it. No. no. The problem with those panels is there's not many that make the cut when they're that. So there's a lot of right. you know, fallout and that gets rolled into the production cost. So yeah. it's the, they have the M3 and the G2. The M3 is wireless. The G2 is the flagship OLED and it. I've sold a couple of them. They're <laughs> really cool. They're so one of the guys here locally has one and he sits like five feet from it. Mm. to play games and stuff it's insane like it that's cool it is insane it is it's too bright yeah. so i think he's got it maxed out and it's i mean immersive it, it's immersion to the max yeah it's pretty I awesome get the one i heard somebody mentioned in the chat way earlier at the beginning of the show the high is coming out with a 120 so, oh my gosh i dude i got the room in here i'd love to see it i've got an 85 now I put a 120 in there. Oh, absolutely. That's but you're getting to the point of like they're gonna be hard to bring into houses and stuff at some point. Yeah. And that might be the max. I mean, what's 120? 
How tall um, is 120? It'd get through a six foot doorway, I would think. It's not going to be higher than six foot. I don't know. It's got to weigh like 300 pounds. Oh, yeah. It might be big. Uh, <laughs> go back to Claude. He said, I'm ready. Dang, you guys. I just broke ground. All right. Congrats, man. That's exciting. Yeah. Can't wait. I love seeing you guys. Very, like, very exciting. Put out your stuff. Down to the last few. Actually, the last one. We'll answer this one. Wrap it up. Aaron Thomas, Ryan, did you do an update on? Oh, we did that. Yes, we hit that at the very beginning of the show. Oh, man. That was a lot, dude. I bet we answered it. Oh, that's funny. I have a reminder at 11 p.m. every night to remind me about the podcast. I have to go. Here's the thing. I have to go back in, number one, and add the monetization. Typically, I don't turn on monetization oh. while we're in the stream or you guys get ads while we're doing this live. So I don't do any monetization most of the time. Um, but then for some reason, when you turn it on and say auto, I've seen YouTube put, no lie, 30 ads in like a 10 minute period. And I'm going, you gotta be kidding me. Like I get comments like, dude, these ads are killing me. I'm like, what ads? I didn't, I didn't do anything. YouTube, I, for some reason, they just goof it up on the live streams, the podcast. So I usually got to go back in and manually just add a couple mm -hmm. somewhere through that. So, so I can make my 10 bucks on the live stream. So your super chats are very, very appreciative. So cool, man. Three hours and one minute and 29 seconds. We're going to wrap it up here. Ryan, any thoughts as we wrap this thing up? I know there were a lot of questions that we didn't get to because yeah. we do have to stop starring at some point. Yeah. So I do apologize about the questions that we did not yeah. get to. Yeah, there's um, no way. We just do this every Sunday. So if you got uh, questions, get here early because they start real, stacking up. Real quick, movie for next week. Are you all <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm like, are you and, and Jonathan going to watch one? What should we? We both watch The Abyss. What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Do something a little newer. How about because Godzilla minus one came out? Mm -hmm. How about Shin Godzilla? Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla? Yes. Don't know about that. One. Okay. I think I'm saying right. that right. It was the previous, the one before Godzilla minus one. It's the Japanese storyline. And mm. I enjoyed it. I'm going to, I'll watch it again. Uh, okay. So let's do that. All Not right, Napoleon Saturday. Dynamite, Nicholas. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Right. I got some editing. To do. Well, I won't be doing any editing tonight. I'm probably going to take a break, honestly. My little man, keeping him six days. I'm wore out mentally. Three-hour live stream. I'll do a... Um, usually, we do about two hours um, Zoom with my patrons on Tuesdays, so... You guys are interested. Love to have you join us there. And uh, but I may go play some Call of Duty Zombies tonight. You play online? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You I like. I don't son? like the new zombie. Um, what's that? You gonna play with your son? Dude, he's been playing like Fortnite and all these. He because kind of the same thing. So instead of us just hanging out and playing for fun, he's like, Dad, uh, I'd love to jump on with you, but this new whatever came out i gotta make a video on it and so he'll play a game and make a video on it and so he's in work mode but he's getting paid. Get he's doing good he's getting cool opportunities and i can see him being able to do this one day full time so good um he was telling me the other day i think he ended up making like tiktok paid him four thousand dollars this month as a 24 year old dude i couldn't imagine solid That's insane dude and he's got his full-time job. So I could see him. And he picked up a couple of um, like sponsored videos. And they paid him like 1500 bucks a video for a three-minute video. I'm like, dude, I need to switch over to TikTok. <laughs> I make like, you know, my videos are long. They take me forever to edit. It takes him like 30 minutes. So, but yeah, he's loving it, dude. But he's having a blast. Good Doing for what him. He loves. He's passionate about it. He's Ever since he was a little man, he's, he's had video games galore. Like loves video games and he, he just knows them and he plays them so that's his uh what's his channel it's jacob m stevens i think it's like jacob dot m stevens 
So he just reviews games and he just was invited to go out to the, um, one of the game re- not rewards game awards in California. So he and his wife went out there with two other people, TikTok crazy times. Yeah. So summer, eh, I don't think it's, it's luck. Uh, I see a comment says, um, you know, summer lucky on TikTok. The reality, and, and we could say the same thing about content creators on YouTube. I don't think it's luck. I think it's, those that are willing to put in forth the effort. He was, when he started out, he made three videos every single day for an entire year. And he wasn't making hardly anything. I mean, TikTok on their old creator program was, I mean, you're talking, he'd make 30 bucks a month kind of deal. And then um, now they have a creator beta program, which they pay a lot more. Um, So I forget what he gets paid, but, Like if he makes a, if he gets a million views, I think he makes a thousand dollars on the video. Dude, I ain't never made a thousand bucks on a YouTube video ever. So that's pretty amazing kind of thing. So appreciate all the hard work. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate you, brother. So, but yeah, it's, it's hard work as a content creator. But again, the great thing even about my son is even from the very beginning, he said, dad, he said, if I make money down the road, that's cool. He said, I just want opportunities. I'm watching people get opportunities like you did this, you know, get invited to this game. Like he was there when, and I I forget the guy's name, but the guy that is Kratos in God of War, he was there giving like a speech, you know? And so he's sitting like six rows back from this, you know, like one of his heroes kind of thing. And so to be able to do that, to be able to, to interview, not really interview, but have a conversation with, the person that um i guess i don't know what you call it designed or founded not founded the last of us anyway he was a creator of the last of us and so he's having this conversation with you know this guy that he really looks up to and so he's like dad i just want these opportunities and so the opportunities are coming man but he's putting in the effort i mean every single day he makes content and he's got a newborn son he's got a full-time job and he's cranking out you know, so he's putting in the work. So it's definitely not, not luck. You know, his dad, me, I hit 10,000 subscribers and I hadn't made a video since. <laughs> it's like, I was busting it to get that on. Like, Milestone done. Exactly. Check. And then I was like, man, I, I can barely keep up with YouTube, much less YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and, you know, so but anyway, cool deal, man. Well, we are going to wrap it up here. Hard worker like his daddy. He sure is, man. I'm super proud of my son and all my kids. Well, guys, hope you all have an incredible week. We'll catch you on the next live stream. Have a good one.